Turner Network Television presents Super Football Saturday Night. Tonight, it's a Big Ten matchup featuring the Wisconsin Badgers against the fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines. Brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. And by Coors and Coors Light. Beers with a difference worth tasting. Super Football Saturday Night continues. Tonight, we'll visit Big Ten territory, Madison, Wisconsin, in Camp Randall Stadium, where a capacity crowd of over 77,000 will watch the first night game ever played here as fourth-ranked Michigan meets Wisconsin, renewing a rivalry that dates back to 1892. Hello, everybody. I'm Bell Proctor, along with Paul Horning. The Michigan Wolverines are ranked fourth. They're undefeated. They've won 18 of the last 19 games in this series. What in the world does Wisconsin have to do to have a chance to win, Paul? Well, I think the best shot they'd have if they showed up with the Nebraska football team. They might have a little bit better <laughs> Other chance. than that. <laughs> well, other than that, you know, they haven't. Uh, they're one in three. They thought they'd be undefeated coming into this game against University of Michigan. The last couple of years, they've turned it over 13 times against the University of Michigan. Their offense has got to play better. The defense for Wisconsin has been playing pretty good. The coach here, Jim Hillis, has been involved in kind of a quarterback controversy. It wasn't until the middle of this week that he finally decided on his starting quarterback, selecting Mike Howard over Bud Keyes. Well, he went with the senior, Mike Hart. Mike Hart has not come to the top. The cream hasn't risen to the top, as they say. He hasn't had a good year, and Jim Hillis thought he would be a much better quarterback than he showed this year. Bud Keyes will probably see a lot of action tonight, but these two young men must and I say must they must have a great night if they're going to beat this good Michigan team but of course for Michigan there is no problem at quarterback with All-American candidate right. Jim Harbaugh well Jim Harbaugh is a, just a classy quarterback Bo Schembecker absolutely says he's the best pro prospect at quarterback he's ever had he can throw the football he runs it he's their leader and uh, he's put a lot of wins on the board for the University of Michigan Injuries have been a problem for both these schools. Michigan has a couple of key players out. Well, actually, both running backs are Larry Emery will plays. He still has a slight injury. He missed last week's game. Of course, Jamie Morris, I don't even think, made the trip. So they're going to miss that fine little tailback. Mr. Wilcher, uh, Thomas Wilcher, steps in for uh, J Jamie uh, Morris. And Thomas Wilcher is a good running back. And there's not too much of a loss in that spot. All right, we'll see what happens here in Madison. Right now, let's go back to Kevin Slayton in our studio in Atlanta. The stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. It'll be the fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines against Wisconsin. Coach Jim Hillis disappointed in his club start. They're one and three, and as Paul said, he kind of looks at this as the start of a new season. Temperature 49 degrees, been raining most of the day. In fact, all of the past week here in the Midwest. But a capacity crowd here as we get ready to go. First night game ever played here. And this will be a packed house. They love their football here in Wisconsin, of course, and I can attest to that at this crowd will be lively tonight and as you say Mel this is the first game ever first night game ever here at Camp Randall Stadium for the University of Wisconsin. Here are the Michigan Wolverines undefeated at 3 and all with victories over Notre Dame, Oregon State and Florida State. Bo Schembechler shooting for his 200th win as the college head coach. Week. They beat Florida State 20 to 18, capitalizing on turnovers, forcing four turnovers. In fact, he's only lost to what? Wisconsin one time in 14 games against the University of Wisconsin. In fact, as I said earlier, it usually happens, and uh, as has been in the past, that Wisconsin usually gift wraps the victory spot. Here come the Wisconsin Badgers. We hope to be off to a 4 0 start of this season, but they are 1 and 3 and are primed for an upset tonight against Michigan. The 46th meeting between these two schools. Last year, Michigan won 33 to 6 in Ann Arbor. And we'll be back with the start of tonight's game from Madison in just a moment. Taylor, along 
with Nate Odom, one of the top return men in the country. They kick away from Odom, so this is Kissling. And he gets to the 27-yard line, where Wisconsin will go to work. A tackle made by Alan Bishop of Michigan. Mike Howard starting at quarterback. And it was not, as we said, until midweek they decided on Howard definitely as their starter. Joe Almatron scheduled to start at fullback, but probably won't play much. He has a bad shoulder. Larry Emery's also banged up. Reggie Tompkins has been the leading receiver. The offensive line was expected to be one of the strengths, but they've had injury problems. First down, 10 for the Wolverines. The Badgers. High formation. And the handoff goes to Steve Vinci, number 22, starting in place of Larry Emery. So apparently Jim Hillis making some last-minute changes. Emery's had a bad hamstring. Defensively, Mark Mesner, an All-American candidate for Michigan. Billy Harris, very tough nose guard. Andy Moeller's father, Gary, is a defensive coordinator for the Michigan football team. Garland Rivers had the best game of his college career last season against Wisconsin. And, and Mel, I don't, secondary. I don't think they can ill afford to lose Larry Emery. He's been their best back here for three or four years. They need him to have a good night. He didn't play at all last week. Howard will throw on second and ten. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Marvin Artley out of the backfield. It was Artley who scored the only touchdown last week against Wyoming. So he is in there in place of Armand Trout. A couple of people making their first collegiate starts. Number 39, Scott Fester, and a wideout for Wisconsin making his first start. There are two defenders in the secondary that are starting for the first time. Third down, 10. Howard has only completed 51% of his passes so far, four touchdowns. And he's had five interceptions. Vinci is the lone setback. Third down, 10 for Howard. The pitch to Vinci, trying to get outside. And he's cut down at the 28-yard line by Ivan Hicks, coming up from the strong safety spot. Hicks, the brother of Dwight Hicks, who had a great career in the National Football League. And Wisconsin will have to punt. The kicking game is a strength for the Badgers. Scott Sapicki is the leading putter in the Big Ten and third in the country. John Polisar back deep for Michigan as we look at Sapicki, a junior from St. Louis, Missouri, who's averaging almost 46 yards a kick. Nice kick. Good Polisar signaling for a fair catch, and Michigan will have possession at the 32. And let's go to Kevin Slayton for an update in Atlanta. All right, Mel, thank you very much. A couple of finals to pass on to you. Ninth-ranked Arkansas won by 17, but they trailed 17-13 at one point. And Ohio State has won their third in a row, a shutout of Illinois. Let's go back now to Madison. So Wisconsin unable to move on their first possession. Michigan will take over at the 33 as we look at Jim Harbaugh, number four, the senior from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Gerald White, 22, and Thomas Wiltshire opening up in the backfield. Wiltshire starting in place of the injured Jamie Morris. Well, he's a good drop back passer. He's a good rollout. He's their leader. He runs the option. He does it all. And the handoff Look at this. goes to number 27, Wiltshire, who has 4-3 speed in the 40, and he nearly picks up a first down. Got tremendous quickness. Last year against Wisconsin on only 10 carries, he rushed for over 100 yards. Bo Schembechler in his 18th year as the head coach of Michigan. Looking for number 200 tonight. Jamie Morris again is back in Ann Arbor. He didn't make the trip, and we're looking at Thomas Wiltshire, a senior out of Detroit. Big veteran offensive line. The average 285 pounds. Elliott, the biggest and the best. He's a 306 pounder at right tackle. A gain of nine on first down. Second down, one. And a handoff again to Wiltshire. He's got the first down. Oh, beautiful cut that time by Thomas Wiltshire, Mel. His play was designed to almost like a run to daylight play off the right side to tackle the point of attack, and he made a good cut back. There's the Wisconsin defensive line. Now, this Wisconsin defense is no slouch. Mr. Hillis, if you take a look at the linebackers, Michael Reed, possibly the best linebacker, and a good set, too. Nate Odoms, among the nation's leaders in interceptions, he's got five of them already, in addition to his ability as a return man. First and ten for Michigan. And as I said, Hill has said the defense has been playing well where we make our mistakes is on offense. And again, it's Wilson. Well, he's been busy so far. They've got a penalty marker down as Wilson gets into Wisconsin territory. Yeah, 
pointed to big number 72 John Elliott I think he got caught for holding six seven three hundred and six pounds Mel the big offensive right tackle I think he got caught Michael Reed number 52 has been busy for Wisconsin he's already been in on three tackles as we look at our referee Tom Quinn Officials for today's game, Ed Hassel, the umpire, Tom Ransom, the line judge, John Everett, the field judge, and the announcer of the And that's with the On the offense, repeat first down. Here's a replay. Let's see if we can pick it up. I think it's number 72. He pointed right in. There's Wiltshire. Makes a nice cut. Now you see, there he is, number 72, and he just buried the defensive guy, but he had a hold of his jersey. Greg McMurtry, number one, is in it. Wide receiver for Michigan. Harbaugh is back to throw. Look at that, wide open. And his man is wide open. Ken Higgins getting the start in place of the injured Paul Jokic. And I, and I tell you, this kid's a fine receiver. He's a senior from Battle Creek, 6'2", 190 pounds. And he's wide open down the left sidelines. And good pitch by Mr. Harbaugh. Look at that nice touch he's got on the football. Enough for the first down. Picked up 24 yards, Mel. Nate Odom's knocked him out of bounds. So Michigan on the move. First down 10 at the 37-yard line of Wisconsin. Higgins flips to the right side. White and Wiltshire in the I formation. Polisar in motion. And it's Wiltshire again. And he's dropped for a loss. Busting through there to get him. Was number 63, the nose tackle, Michael Boykins. Beautiful move. Watch the interior of this line. Here's a little playoff tackle. All that back is doing is looking for the hole. Beautiful defensive move by the nose guard, Mike Boykins. The loss of a yard is Jim Hillis, who succeeded the late Dave McLean, who unfortunately passed away last April at the age of 49. He suffered a heart attack. Jim Hillis had been the defensive coordinator here for seven or eight years. Second down and 11 for the Wolverines. Harbaugh with a play action fake. Now being pressured, he can really scramble and buy some time. And his pass. They're going to get make it a catch. Catch by Ken Higgins. He only have to have one foot in bounds in college football. Well, of course, it was a sensational catch. I don't care if he was out of bounds. But it looked from our vantage point. Let's take another look and see if we can get a closer look. That's 24-yard pickup. And watch a great move. Jim Harbour puts his little reverse move on. They've got him sacked. Look at that little reverse move out of Fran Tarkington. Now he gets loose. Look at him throwing it on the run going to his left. See if he's beat. And I think he made it. I think he made it. It was a good catch. That is one of Harbaugh's strength, the ability to scramble and improvise. Well, he threw it so well going to his left. That's the hardest pitch, Mel. First down at the Wisconsin 14-yard line. off to Wiltshire trying to turn the corner. Good cutback. Tim Jordan, number 95, led the charge along with Dan Kissling, number 45, the strong safety who's making his first collegiate start. Good pursuit that time by the defense. They were all over him. There's Harbor stats. 66% so far this season. Three touchdowns, only one interception. Been intercepted only once in his last 10 games. That was against Oregon State. He had completed 149 consecutive passes until that interception. Second down, eight at the 12 yard line. 10 20 remaining in the first quarter for Madison. Colasar again in motion. Hard on the rollout. And his pass is complete to Gerald White, but he's cut down. Tackle made by Dan Pushman, the old freshman from Oregon, Wisconsin, the high school player of the year in 1985 in the state of Wisconsin. Going to need four now, third and four coming up, important play for this Badger defense. Third down, four for Michigan at the eight. What'd they have? They had eight turnovers last week against Wyoming and only got three points off of eight turnovers. Wisconsin. Wyoming turned the ball over eight times. It's correct, and Wisconsin was able to get only a field goal. Harbaugh, three for three for 52 yards so far. 
Rob Perryman is in as they go to the wishbone. They like to we'll do this in short yardage situations. And now Michigan will call a timeout. Apparently, Harbaugh did not like the looks of what he saw defensively. And this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. <laughs> Mel Proctor with Paul Hornig back at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. Michigan on the move. They have moved out of the four or inside the 10 yard line, actually about the eight, where it'll be third down and four. Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines conferring with Bo Schembecker. Harbaugh grew up around Michigan football. His dad, Jack, was a defensive coordinator here for years before moving on to Stanford and becoming a head coach in Western Michigan. Third down, four. Gonna watch John Colser. He's got man-to-man -man coverage way out on the left flank. Here he comes in motion. And the pitch to Gerald White looks like he wants to throw. Option. Can't find an open man. He's run out of bounds for a loss. Chased out by Michael Reed, who's having quite a game. Now they were trying to get it to Mr. Colser. He's come back. A little man in motion, and they threw the option around to the left. And good coverage by that Badger defense. Here it comes. Here's the pitch. Here's the option now, and he showed it much too quick. He should have kept the run alive and then pulled up and threw the football. Poor execution on that little pitch. He's got the option to run it or throw it. Pat Moons is in to try a 26-yard field goal. He's two for two from this range. And the kick is no good. Well, Moons has made only three of eight field goals this year. Four of eight. This is one. There's no score with 9.13 remaining here at Madison in the first quarter. And we'll be right back. Pat Moons of Michigan has just missed a 26-yard field goal, so the Wolverines fail to score. Now Wisconsin will have the football. And, Paul, what's the key for Wisconsin? Do they need a quick score? Well, I tell you, they've got to make some first downs first. They haven't made a first down. They haven't made too many first downs all year long. Their offense has sputtered all the time. And against this great Michigan defense they're going to have to show me something they've got their best back out Larry Emery hasn't seen any action nor has Joe Armantrout he was supposed to be the starting fullback he hasn't played yet either Marvin Idley and Steve Vinci are in the backfield the handoff to Vinci he's brought down by number 39 John Willingham a 235 pound junior from Dayton Ohio end of the yard it'll be second down nine we mentioned this is the first home night game in Wisconsin's history. In fact, this year was another first. The Packers played a preseason here to a full sellout crowd. Steve Wallace is in at wide receiver for Wisconsin. Well, they play deep in the secondary. And the pass intended for Wallace goes right through his hand. That's going to be open. They play so deep in the secondary. Just looking down there, Mel, the cornerbacks are about 10 yards off the wideouts. The safety men are lined up about 17 or 18, about 15 yards deep. Now, you'll see there's no defender comes into your picture until right here. He was way off his man he had to cover. Bill Williams, number 86, checks in for Wisconsin, a freshman who hasn't played at all up until this game. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, highly regarded by Coach Jim Hillis. Third down nine, another passing situation facing Mike Howard, who was intercepted five times against Michigan last year. And that pass is dropped. Another punt. Brian Anderson couldn't hold it. And again, let's go to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta. All right, checking that score out on the West Coast. Fresno State has come back. They are now tied at 24, just starting the fourth quarter. And Wyoming got upset by Iowa State, 21-10. Now back to Madison. So Wisconsin unable to move on their second possession. And Scott Sapicki will punt. His first kick was for 38 yards. John Colasar waiting to punt for Michigan. No score here at Madison, Wisconsin. A low driving kick. Takes a Wisconsin bounce. Colasar having trouble finding the handle, and he falls on it at the 31-yard line. And we'll return to Camp Randall Stadium with 8:17 remaining in the first quarter. No score between Michigan and Wisconsin. This is Super Football Saturday Night on TNT. For Wisconsin, on their first two possessions, it's been four downs and punt. That's it. 
and there better be a lot better than that because even though Michigan made a little mistake didn't make the first down near the goal line had to miss a field goal you keep that up and you're going to see a lot of points on the board first down for the Wolverines at the 31 Harbaugh to throw on first down and the pass is incomplete off the hands of Thomas Wilcher lost his balance and slipped down Michael Reed number 52 is defending what a game he had last week against Wyoming he was involved in 14 tackles uh, he's their best defensive football player. He wears those glasses, as you can see. Michael Reed, a senior from Albany, Georgia. 6'2", 227 pounds. Active. The Badgers are playing without one of their best linebackers, Craig Raditz, who had 18 tackles last year against Michigan. He's out with a bad shoulder. Second down, 10 for Harbaugh. A handoff to Wiltshire. Tripped up at the 36. Wilcher has tremendous speed. He's the NCAA 55 meter high hurdle champion. Dick Teach, number 59, made the tackle. That's pretty strong when you got your number one running back goes down and you got a kid like Wilcher to come in. Third deep. Well, they miss Jamie Morris, who rushed for over 1,100 yards as a sophomore, but he's out with a knee problem. Wilcher, though, has carried six times for 22 yards. Look at Bo over on the sideline. Chewing that gum. Third down five, Rob Perryman, number 37, is in the backfield. Harper's pass is complete to Ken Higgins. Oh, a good quick release, and he pumped fake once, and they kind of had that sidearm action right on the money. Beautiful pitch. Watch this pitch by Harbaugh. He's got great pass protection, too, Mel. He can just stand back there. He's got his eye on the receiver all the way. Ken Higgins. Looks like he could have a big day. He's already caught a couple of passes tonight. Made some great catch earlier. If you take a look at him, he caught seven passes, 119 yard, yards coming in. Gerald White, Thomas Wilson in the backfield, along with Perriman as they go to the wishbone on first down. And the handoff to Perriman, a 226 pound senior from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Jim Komet, number 54, made the tackle. He's returning to action this week after missing last week's game against Wyoming with a bad shoulder. Bob Perryman has lost yardage only once in 101 carries over the last two seasons. That shows you what kind of good offensive line he's got in front of him to push everybody back. Boy, they are big. Elliott oh, at 306. Man. Who's on the left tackle at 289? Where do these kids get so big? You don't think it has anything to do with that weight program. The smallest player on the front line is Michael Dames, the left guard. He's a mere 258. The handoff to Wiltshire. They try to strip the ball away. Michael Reed, number 52, again on the tackle for Wisconsin. And if you don't think they practice stripping the ball away, these running backs, they're crazy. Each team does it. You can see he's got the ball a little bit loose there, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep doing that with Wilcher. Tim Jordan on the stop. Third down, two at the 48-yard line of Wisconsin. Washington back on the winning track after losing to USC. Stanford. Winning over San Diego State. Stanford will meet Washington right. in the game you'll see next week here on TNT. First down. And you're going to see one of the best Gerald quarterbacks White in the country in John Pay. He can really throw it. Gerald White picks up the first down for Michigan. Charlie Fawley, number 42, on the tackle. And the Wisconsin students doing their best to keep warm on a chilly uh, evening. It is. Listen, this is not chilly around here, Mel. This is like a hot summer evening in Wisconsin. You'll get used to this. Bo Schembechler, who leads Division 1A coaches with 199 victories. Among active coaches, Joe Paterno is second with 190. Great leader of men. John Colasar is in motion. The handoff to Wilkes. Oh, what he did he get popped? Michael Reed. Woo. What a game he's having. Look at him, man. I tell you, he felt that himself. He got that's what you can hear that leather pop. You see a back just there's a lot of forward motion this running back here and he just look at that right that's the way you stick your head right at those numbers good tackle gain of one yard it'll be second down nine Michael Reed from Albany Georgia having an outstanding game Greg McMurtry number one a speedy freshman 
from Brockton, Massachusetts, been at wide receiver. Harbaugh under pressure, and he unloads it. That's intentional grounding. There wasn't a receiver. There's anywhere. a late penalty marker. Oh. That's a good call. And it was a good move on the, <laughs> on the part of grounding. Harbaugh. That involves a loss of down. It's a good move on the part of Harbaugh. He threw it away on purpose. The only problem was there wasn't any receiver in that vicinity. Watch. He's in trouble. He knows it. He feels the sack coming. He just threw it. Nobody's there. Tim Jordan had a hold of Harbaugh, and he unloaded the pass. It's intentional grounding. Tim Jordan is nicknamed Lightning, and the other linebacker, the outside linebacker Rick Graff, on the other side is Thunder. Grounding. A ring of forward pass. Lost it down. For a loss of down, it'll be third down. That's an intentional one. 15 yards, loss of a down. See number 78, Mark Hammerstein. His brother Mike was an All-American in Michigan last year and a third-round pick of the Cincinnati Bengals. He's the smaller brother. He's 6'4", 285. Ken Higgins, John Colasar, and as they go to three wide receivers. Third down at 20. Harbaugh going long. He's got Colasar open, and he's got it inside the 10. Well, what a beautiful touch. John what a Colasar getting behind the quarterback, Bobby Taylor. I tell you, what a beautiful pitch by Jim Harbaugh and a beautiful maneuver by John Colesar. 48 yards on this off of play action. Not good, too good of faking. It's just a straight fly pattern on the right side. Colesar beat the cornerback over there. Is that Nate Odoms? No, nope, that's Bobby Taylor over there on the coverage. He beat Bobby Taylor and Harbaugh put it right on the money. First and goal to go at the eight yard line. The Wolverines again go to the wishbone formation with Perriman White. Wilshire in the backfield. And it's Perriman, the fullback, blasting down near the five yard line. Charlie Farley, number 42, made the tackle for Wisconsin. Ocean Beckler setting into play. I was going to say, what made that even more beautiful as far as the Wolverines are concerned? It was what, third and about 20? They right. just throw the home run like that right on the money. That was Colesar beating Bobby Taylor. Boy, that's going to be costly, maybe, if you look back on it. Now on a second down situation at the five. The Wolverines go with two tight ends and the wishbone. Hand off to Wiltshire. Bearing into the end zone for a touchdown. You Tough running by Wiltshire, a 188-pounder. Just overpowering people. I tell you, wonderful running off the right side, and the blocking wasn't bad at the point of attack over there either. But Thomas Wiltshire, the senior out of Detroit, has really showed me something. He's got great speed. Great athlete. He cut back and just bulled his way into the end zone here. Little cross buck action. Good block by the remaining back over there, and he just takes Reed right into the end zone with him. The fullback, Bob Perriman, did a good job of carrying out the fake. So Michigan has taken the lead. Pat Moon's in to try the point after with a putter, Monty Robbins holding for him, and the conversion kick is good. So there's a timeout on the field with 3.51 remaining in the first quarter. It's Michigan 7 and Wisconsin nothing, and we'll be right back. Watch the fake of the fullback here. Bob Perryman, 37. Watch the fake. Watch the block now. Gerald White on the right side. Now watch the running of Thomas Wiltshire. He just carries Michael Reed right into the end zone. Three pretty good move, moves by all the backs. The drive covering 100 and, or uh, four play drive. Well, I'm not, I see what we're getting here. Uh, the difference in the yardage. Right. Wisconsin with only four yards. Michigan with 158 so far. Mike Gillette set to kick off. Kisling and Odoms back deep. Michigan would like to keep the ball away from Nate Odoms, who's second the Big Ten in kickoff returns, and they do. It'll be Kisling at the four. Across the 20 and brought down at the 23 yard line by Bobby Abrams of Michigan. Wisconsin unable to move on their first two possessions and let's see if they'll try something different. There's the scoring drive 11 plays 69 yards Wiltshire on a five yard touchdown run and the Wolverines lead it seven to nothing. 
Joe Armentrout, number 23, is now in the backfield for Wisconsin along with Marvin Artley. Armentrout was not expected to play much. He's had a bad shoulder. There he is. He's a co-captain of the football team and a captain of the baseball team here at Wisconsin. And it's Armand Trout with his first carry of the game. The tackle made by Andy Moeller, number 49. Game of three. Armand Trout, a two-time All-Big Ten center fielder, quite a baseball player. Very versatile back. He can run. He can catch out of the backfield. He's also a very strong blocker. Well, he better be all those things and some tonight, and he better do it quickly. Howard rolling away from the pressure, throws back across the grain. The juggling catch made by Bill Williams, his first collegiate reception. He's just a freshman. Beautiful catch. There he is, Billy Williams, number 86. Got a low angle replay of this. Going to roll out left here. Mike Howard just kind of throws it up. That's just good athletic move by Mr. Williams for the first down, picked up 12 yards. So it's a first down for Wisconsin. At the Badger 37, Michigan leading 7 0. Howard over the middle. And his pass is complete to Scott Bester, number 39. His first catch of the year. Mike Howard, a senior from Springfield, Illinois. His nickname is the Springfield Rifle, but the rifle has misfired a bit. He's been intercepted five times coming into this game. Second down nine. Artley and Armitron are the running backs for the Badgers. Armitron, big hole, and he rips through it. He's got a first down. Good blocking over on the right side now for the Wisconsin Badgers. Last couple of minutes here in the first quarter, and they're starting to move the second first down. Look at the blocking up front. Little trap blocking. Armand Trout just moves off to the right side. He ran to daylight beautifully, and he got 11 yards in the first down. Another look. A little double team blocking there, actually, at the hole, too. And I guess you'd have to double team some of those defensive linemen, though. That's the second Wisconsin first down. Howard on a rollout. Got a man open. The pass is complete to Marvin Hartley to the 45-yard line. It looks point. like Paul Howard's beginning to roll away from the pressure, and he's more successful. And I think he's going to have to do that a little bit more, even though there was pressure. Hard showed a little poise here. Off a of play action, a little counter roll. Puts it right on the money. Nice catch by Marvin Hartley here. He gets up in it. He's still short of the first down. They picked up about six and a half. So it'll be second down and four. Bester is wide to the right. Williams split to the near side along with Reginald Tompkins. Hartley breaking tackles down the sidelines. Out of bounds. Harlan Rivers finally put a shoulder into him and knocked him out. But a big pickup and another first down for Marvin Hartley. 11 yard game. Oh, three first downs in a row. Got the fans up on their feet here at Camp Randall. Good blocking again. We're going to take another look. Good hard running. Marvin Arnley down the right sideline. He gets knocked out of bounds. Picks up 11. Arnley from Chicago. They call him the L train. First down for Wisconsin at the Michigan 34. This Michigan leading 7-0. to Joe Armentrop. Both these teams now use a, the identical defense. They use the same defense, three down linemen, four linebackers, and four men deep in the secondary. I mentioned that this is the first night game played here. The lighting for tonight's game is being provided by Musco Lighting of Oskaloosa, Iowa. This is Wisconsin's first night game here ever. A truck set up outside the stadium to provide the lighting. I tell you. 38 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Howard to throw. Hartley again. Inside the 25 to the 
23, and he's got another first down. But that little fake, they're getting outside the defensive ends of Michigan. The defensive ends of another 11-yard gain. Now we're going to show you what you look at the defensive end. Here's a little fake, and everybody gets caught on the inside there. Very poor defensive maneuver by the defensive end of Michigan, and Arley gets on the outside, picks up a never. 11 more yards and the fourth first down in a row. First down to 23, nine seconds remaining in the quarter. So probably be the final play of the first period if they get it off. The pitch to Armantrout, the time had expired. There is a penalty marker down, however. Let's see what the flag is all about. first quarter so we will return to Camp Randall Stadium with the score Michigan 7 and Wisconsin nothing this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT portions of tonight's game are being brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer for comfort innovation and a real commitment to quality it's today's Buick's Wisconsin on the move Mike Howard has completed four of seven passes for 32 yards on this drive. The Badgers have a first down at the 23 of Michigan. The Wolverines leading 7-0 as we begin the second quarter. Jim Hillis has to be pleased the way his offense is moving. That's been a sore spot for this club. Hardly in the backfield along with Armand Trout. Marvin Hartley. Flag down. I think he changed the play at the line of scrimmage, Mel. Did gain a couple. Andre McIntyre, number 54, made the tackle for Michigan. <laughs> 49-year-old Jim Hillis, who began his coaching career as a junior high school coach in his hometown of Warren, Ohio. Procedure call against the Badgers. Procedure on the offense. First, repeat first down. So it'll be first down and 15 from the 28 yard line. Interesting first quarter stats. Michigan dominated the yardage, but uh, Wisconsin very much in the game. And we've got a penalty marker down. Another five against the Badgers. Encroachment on the offense. Dead ball encroachment on the offense. Offside, moving back. Well, this has been a problem for Wisconsin in the early going this season, that tendency to self-destruct when they get something going, either a penalty or a breakdown or a mistake. And Jim Hillison, that's the kind of thing we've got to overcome. They say the defense has played pretty good. They've taken the ball away a lot, and the offense can't take advantage of it. One and three, for heaven's sakes. Jim Hillis thought this team would be undefeated coming in here tonight against the University of Michigan. Now, instead, they're one and three. Andy Hartlip, number 30, is into the Wisconsin backfield. It'll be first down and 20. the up back in the eye along with Armand Trout. Howard's pass is complete to Andy Hartley. Good pitch, good catch, and a good tackle. And now let's go to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta with an update. Thank you, Al. Everybody's beating up on Purdue these days. This afternoon, it was Minnesota easily. Quarterback Jeff George of Purdue out with a concussion, but he will play again next week. Washington State leading Oregon State in the third quarter. Now let's go back to Madison. Michigan leading Wisconsin 7 0. First minute of the second quarter. Wisconsin's drive breaking down because of penalties, facing a second down and 12 situation. Tompkins is wide to the left. Bester split to the right. Howard throwing long for Tompkins in the end zone. It's incomplete. Reginald Tompkins, the Badgers' leading receiver, got behind David Arnold, but the pass by Howard was too long. I had to release it a little bit too early. 
and to release it a little bit too early. You see the receiver breaking free. Now the ball's already been thrown and it's overthrown by about three yards. Michigan's had to make some changes in their defensive secondary. Eric Campbell, who normally starts at weak cornerback, moved to free safety. David Arnold has moved into the weak quarterback spot. Tony Gann, who normally starts at free safety, is sidelined with a hip pointer. Mike Howard had connected on five straight passes to that incompletion. And the handoff to Hartwood. They almost got the first down there. He was within a pair of breaking, at least for the first down there. It's an ankle tackle. Could have forced a field goal attempt. Andy Moeller brought him down, who leads uh, the Michigan team in tackles so far this year with 39 coming in. 27 is unassisted tackles. He's been all over the field for Michigan. Andy Moeller, senior from Ann Arbor. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt by Todd Gregory, a junior from Green Bay, who holds the Wisconsin career record with 35 field goals. From this range, he's one for one on the year. The Badgers are on the scoreboard. A 35-yard field goal by Todd Gregory, and with 13-10 remaining in the second quarter, it's now Michigan seven and Wisconsin three. We'll be right back. Wisconsin quarterback Mike Howard showed on that drive that he could move the football completing five of nine passes for 38 yards as coach Jim Hillis had a talk with him earlier this week about becoming more of a leader and uh, apparently that's paid off. He's got, and he's got a guy behind him Bud Keys who's got a lot of confidence in we might see a little of Mr. Keys before the night's over. Beautiful Look at night. The state capital. Madison the capital of Wisconsin. Back deep for Michigan. Colasar number 40 and Ernie Holloway 48. Todd Gregory to kick off for the Badgers. 7 to 3, Michigan leading. A high short kick. It'll be taken by one of the up men. That's a fair catch. Bob Perriman right singling thing. for a fair catch. You won't see that too often. We talked about that last week. You may signal for a fair catch on the kickoff. They thought they'd catch him sleeping. That kid was wide awake. This ball is kicked very high, and he's getting a little nervous there. Now, you didn't see the signal there for the fair catch, but about two or three seconds before that, stuck up his arm. Thomas Wiltshire almost tried to take it away from him. He wanted to run it back. So Michigan goes to work first and 10 at the Wolverine 26. Gerald White 22, Thomas Wiltshire 27 in the backfield, along with Jim Harbaugh. Kenny Higgins is in motion. To Wilson. Hard hitting by a fired up Wisconsin team as Dick Teach, number 59, teed off on him. Kentucky leading Southern Mississippi, 3 to nothing in the first quarter. Syracuse leading by a field goal over Missouri. Top ranked Miami leading Northern Illinois, 7 0 in the first quarter. No gain on the play. It'll be second down 10. Polisar and Higgins split to the near side. Harbaugh with a play action fake. And a pass is caught. What a catch by Ken Higgins going over the top of Bobby Taylor for the reception. First down Michigan. I tell you what beautiful concentration on a pass receiver right here. Ken Higgins. You'll see he looks he is wide open here. A little cross pattern. A pretty good pick there. He gets hit just as the ball arrives. Great concentration. That's Bobby Taylor on the hit. A gain of 20 yards, and apparently Higgins was shaken up. Senior from Battle Creek, Michigan. Fine baseball player and a 4.0 grade point average. He took a pretty good hit from Bobby Taylor. They're already a little thin at that position because Paul Jokic, the six foot eight inch wide receiver, is out with a, a groin pull, and Higgins is filling in for him. get another look at it good hit right in the stomach and a great concentration as I said by the receiver to hold on to that football so Higgins is coming off the field the first down for Michigan 
At the Wolverine 46, Michigan leading 7-3, a five-yard touchdown run by Thomas Wiltshire. Wisconsin getting a field goal from Todd Gregory. Two tight ends in there now for Michigan. Jeff Brown, 80, and 89, Derek Walker. Pitch to Wiltshire gets a good block from White. Good and he's running. across midfield into Wisconsin territory. Right. Nate Odoms finally brought him down. What a great block by Gerald White. I tell you, this kid makes up his mind when he wants to cut. He heads up that field north south pretty good. Watch this little pitch. Now, when he sees a little daylight, he turns it on. This kid's a fine running back. He's got a good sense for open field here. And then when he comes into traffic, he puts that head down, and gets an extra two. End of eight yards, it'll be second down and two for Michigan. Colasar wide to the right. Greg McMurtry split to the near side. Our boss seems to be changing the play. Oh, he hurry. I'll tell you what happened. Wiltshire. Look at this kid. Look at him go. He's got a first down. What he wanted to do, he wanted to get the referee to call timeout. He didn't want to waste the timeout. The crowd was yelling very, very loud down there, and he wanted, he turned to the referee, and he said, it's a little bit too loud. The referee said, no, you keep it up. But look at this kid run, Thomas Wilcher. He keeps impressing me. Good cut. Look at him, put that head down, and he keeps running forward after he makes that contract. Contact, 47 yards already. He ran right through the tackle of Michael Reed. It's a first down for Michigan at the 40-yard line of Wisconsin. 11.09 remaining in the second quarter. Gerald White and Rob Perriman, number 37, in the backfield now for the Wolverines. Colasar on the slot left. Harbaugh in trouble. And he'll take a loss of about four yards. Blown assignment here. Execution. Problems. Seem to be a broken play. Absolutely. If we can see what happened. It's the handoff. Somebody ran the wrong hole and Harbaugh got in trouble. I guarantee you what Jim's fault. Oh, Gotta give the quarterback the benefit of the doubt. You've been there, haven't you? Yes, sir. Long ago. Yes, sir. Long time ago. Ken Higgins, who was shaken up earlier, is back in at wide receiver. Second down at 14 for the Wolverines. Play action by Harbaugh. And his pass is incomplete, intended for Higgins. And let's go back to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta with an update. All right, Mel, 20 Frank Fresno State trailed by 10 early in the game, but they've roared back to take a seven-point lead with five minutes left. Indiana moves to 4-0 with a victory over Northwestern. Now let's go back to Madison, Wisconsin. Michigan heavily favored coming into the game, a low-scoring first half so far. The Wolverines leading 7-3. Harbaugh's already put together as we listen to the wave some impressive statistics so far here in the first half. Got plenty of time. He's six out of nine, 127. Facing a third and 14 situation. And he's going long for Colasar, and it's tipped away. Great play by Nate Odom. Nate Odom who leads his team in interception, second the NCAA with five. Good coverage that time. Went down the left sidelines. He tried to beat him with a fly pattern. Hey, Bob, how are you? Bob. He made up his mind to go to Colsar all the way. He's got a step on him. Just a great defensive play by Nate Odom. And so Monty Robbins is in the punt. He's only punted eight times all year coming into the game. The Wisconsin punter punted. Ten times in last week's game against Wyoming alone. Odoms is back deep, a high driving spiral as Odoms signals for a fair catch. It hits inside the ten. A great punt by Robbins. It's down at about the two or three by Garland Rivers. A 40-yard kick, but great placement by Robbins. And we've got a timeout with Michigan leading Wisconsin 7-3. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Super Football Saturday Night is brought to you locally by the people who make glass containers naturally.
Monty Robbins punt was down at the Wisconsin four yard line so the Badgers have poor field position as they go to work with 953 remaining in the second quarter and Michigan leading seven to three. Hard leave and Armitrout in the backfield it's Joe Armitrout off left tackle and he busts out for a good pickup. John Willingham brought him down and now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching WTBS Atlanta. Gain of six yards on first down. I tell you, Joe Armantrout's put a little spice into this offense as far as Wisconsin is concerned. He didn't play the first two series, and they put him in, and they've had a little success blocking for this kid. He was not expected to play much this afternoon because of a bad shoulder. Reginald Tompkins split to the right. Scott Bester wide left. Second down four. Like some movement on the Michigan defensive line a little early as Armitrod gets the call again. Dieter Heron, number 35, made the tackle for Michigan. Don't see any uh, penalty marker down. It looked like the, the right defensive tackle moved too early. No, he got back in time. He didn't cross the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and one, and Wisconsin will go with two tight ends, 88 Brian Anderson and number 87 Daniel Howell. Now, even though this is in the second quarter, Mel, this kind of a play is kind of a nonchalant play as far as the fans are concerned, but for the coaches and players, very important play for Wisconsin. They must make a first down here. Our mission would get great field position. Third down conversions have been a problem for the Wolverines or uh, the Badgers this year. They got they needed it. a yard. Andy Hartlett and got has it. the first down. Look at, the, look at the Wisconsin players edging on their fans. This drive began at the four yard line. They moved it out to the 15. And Howard has yet to throw a pass. They're doing it on the ground. Bester splits to the right. Reginald Tompkins wide left. Back to the air. Pass is complete. His tight end, Brian Anderson. Eighth catch of the year for Mr. Anderson. No touchdowns. I was doing a good job of mixing his play. He really is, and he's uh, that's the first guy he's going to look at all the time. His tight end, and what they're doing is they're holding those linebackers with a little play fake in the backfield, Mel, and that holds the linebackers and enables the tight end to get loose on the outside. Howard's completed six of ten passes for 42 yards. Number three, David Burks, is in for the Badgers. Second down and six. The handoff to Armitrop. John Willingham on the stop for Michigan. Temperatures in the 40s here in Madison, Wisconsin. Usually it's great weather all the way through to December, and then it gets. Did you ever play in a stadium? Never did. Third down four for Wisconsin. Howard with time, and the pass is complete to Brian Anderson, breaking away from a tackler for a first down. He's, he's getting away from the linebacker. Anderson, that's twice now. He fought his way free from the linebacker. He's wide open. Makes a nice catch here. Good move for the tight end. Watch on the left of your screen. Here he comes. Right over the middle. He's beating the linebacker. He makes a good catch. That's Dieter Heron. Ryan Anderson on the reception for the first down, but you've got to give some credit to that Wisconsin offensive line doing a good job of holding off a fierce pass rush by Michigan. I tell you, this is a good series. This, this series started at their own four-yard line. They needed a couple of first downs. They saw, they've also eaten up about four minutes off that clock. Freshman Bill Williams in it wide receiver, and the pass is picked off by Andy Moeller. What an interception. He timed his move perfectly. That was a great catch on the interception by Andy Moeller. What we can see here. I tell you, the guy was open. That wasn't that bad a pitch. That was just a great defensive move here. He was open. 
Andy Moeller, beautiful interception. Pass was intended for Joe Armentrout, who made the tackle. Andy's father, Gary, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, both he and Jim Harbaugh grew up as youngsters around Michigan football. Jim Harbaugh's father was at one time an assistant coach here, and uh, they've been around both Shep Rutgers since they were time of, uh, about nine years old. Great field position for the Wolverines. Thomas Wiltshire. Big pickup on first down. Charlie Fawley made the tackle for Wisconsin. Well, what a good block. Michael Danes, the left guard, number 76, the junior from Miami, 6'5", 260 pounds. Wiltshire followed him right up into the hole for about six. Speaking of six, six minutes left in the first half. I think we both expect a little more scoring, particularly yes, on the sir. part of Michigan, didn't we? Both these teams are playing it very, very tough at the line of scrimmage, Bell. Good football game, seven to three. And I kind of unexpected. I think a lot of people felt that Michigan could come in here and start eating up on Wisconsin early. Thomas Wiltshire has carried 13 times for 52 yards in the first half. Gerald White gets the call, breaks the tackle inside the 20, down inside the 15-yard line. Hard running by White. Nate Odoms finally stopped it. Good trap blocking right up front. Good quick hitter. Gerald White, the senior from Titusville, Titusville, Florida. This quick hitting. This is probably the quickest hitting play that the Wolverines have, and I think it surprised the Wisconsin defense. He's averaging three and a half yards a pop. He scored twice. He picked up 11 on that play. And we've got a Michigan player shaken up. It's the tight end, Jeff Brown, coming off the field. Derek Walker, number 89, has replaced him. Brown, not only a pretty good receiver, but he's an excellent blocker. First and 10 at the 14 yard line. Michigan threatening. Higgins wide to the right. Polisar splits to the left. And apparently Jim Harbaugh could not hear the signals. Well, Derek Walker, the tight end move. Well, I think it was simply a case of uh, Harbaugh not being able to hear the signals, wasn't it? Tight end move that. I don't know if the referee had blown his whistle before stopping play. Well, they have not walked off the penalty. It's a no call. You see Michigan move back five yards. They thought they were going to be penalized. So evidently, it's a dead, dead ball. And the fans don't like it. I don't blame them. And now they'll get a little louder, make it even more difficult for Harbaugh to hear. They go to the wishbone. Bob Perriman is in. First and ten at the 14. Now Harbaugh does run the option off this. He That's can't hear a thing. No, he's not going to go either. And you know what this is going to do to the crowd. I have to tell you that. Next time it'll be a little bit louder, especially if they have to go back into the huddle. The Wisconsin players waving to their fans to quiet down. Now's the time to snap it. Run a little play right up the gut <laughs> while the linebackers are looking at the fans. And apparently he still can't hear well enough to call a play. They're going to taunt him a little bit more. There we go. Vitale ready to snap the football, but he may have a long wait. You know, I saw this happen one time in New Orleans. First year, the operation of New Orleans Saints fell. This is 25 minutes they held the football game up. I want to tell you, it's not that loud now. I know it's a little bit louder down on the field than you're listening to at home. Mr. Vitale is ready to go, but the crowd is not cooperating. Surprise the Wolverines don't go back and huddle up. Well, I tell you, I don't think it's too loud right now. I think they ought to just go ahead. I've heard it 
a lot louder than this. And I really think Jim Jim Hillis has got a right to be a little bit peeved right now. Now I know, I know Jim Harborough is going to take every advantage. He don't want to snap the count when he feels there's any danger at all of his offensive linemen and backs not hearing the snap count. But it, as time goes on, folks are going to get a little bit louder. Jim Hillis team very much in the game. Michigan leading seven to three with 5-16 remaining in the second quarter. If this keeps up, you know the referees can call in sportsmanlike conduct on the home team. But if you just get down there, get a quick count, get it off, it's over. And now Harbaugh now will give it a try. See? And Harbaugh says, I can't. Now the officials time out. Now he's going to come over and ask Jim Hillis to help him out. But I think what they may do is they will request that the crowd quiet down. I think you get two warnings yeah. and then a penalty. He's going to ask Jim Hillis, and he's explaining it to him. Michigan score came on a five yard run by Thomas Wilcher, Wisconsin, 26 yard field goal by Todd Gregory. Michigan intercepted a pass, Andy Moeller picking it off, and the Wolverines have moved out of the 14 yard line, but the Wisconsin crowd is not cooperating. Looks like the Wisconsin teams could come off the field. <laughs> Jim Hillis motioning to the crowd to quiet down. Well, they're quiet, relatively quiet right now, but as soon as Harbor goes up to take the snap. Now here both teams are going off, and you're going to hear some disgruntled fans now. Well, I've seen games where it's been difficult for the quarterback to hear the signals, but I've never seen the two teams come off the field. <laughs> So we'll take a break and return to Madison, Wisconsin, hopefully a little on the quieter side when we return to both. Mel Proctor with Paul Hornig back in Madison, Wisconsin, Michigan leading upset minded Wisconsin seven to three and the uh, crowd again making too much noise for Michigan quarterback Jim Harbour to hear and they've gone back into the huddle again. I think we we can go now, but wait till they get up to the line of scrimmage. You know what's going to happen as well as I do. Check some scores around the country. What a surprise that is. Nothing. Cincinnati ranking Louisville in the first quarter. They'll come back. Here now an announcement is being yes. made of the crowd here at Camp Randall Stadium. A timeout until all of their timeouts are used and then a five yard delay of game penalty as long as the deep the offense cannot hear their signal. So timeouts will be charged to Wisconsin as long as they have some left and they run out of timeouts it'll be a penalty. And then a five yard penalty follows and then more. Crowd getting a little unruly here in Wisconsin. And let's see if Jim Harbour can get off a play now. First and ten at the 14. to Thomas Wilshire inside the 10. Almost broke it. Michael Reed makes the tackle. Bob Perriman threw a great block for Wilshire. That's just par football off the right side. Everybody's over there. Thomas Wilshire, hard running, picked up seven. He's had 59 yards now and 14 carries. Six yard pickup. It'll be second down and four. Ball at the eight yard line. 440 remaining in the first half. The Wolverines go to the wishbone. The handoff to Perriman, and he's inside the five down to about the two yard line. Well, it's a good thing he gave the football off to Bob Perryman because he slipped. Harbaugh slipped, lost his balance, and went down. Good quick hitter. 
Charlie Farley made the tackle for Wisconsin. But it's first and goal to go now for Michigan at the two yard line. Oh, Schembechler with 159 wins at Michigan, 199 overall. He spent six years as the head coach at Miami of Ohio, his alma mater, before coming to Michigan. First and goal, again the wishbone, two tight ends. The handoff to Wiltshire, and he's in for his second touchdown of the first half. Thomas Wiltshire, they faked it to Perryman there, just to the old little crossback. Crossbuck series. Fullback goes left, left halfback counters. Went in easily. So it's now 13 to 3 in favor of Michigan. Right down the line of scrimmage. Thomas Wiltshire, second touchdown. Pat Moons to try the conversion with Monty Robbins holding for him, trying to make it 14 to 3. is good so there's a timeout on the field with 406 remaining in the first half Michigan has taken a 14 to 3 lead over Wisconsin this is super football Saturday night on TNT Mel Proctor with Paul Horning back in Madison Wisconsin where Michigan leads Wisconsin by a score of 14 to 3 and our reverse angle is coming from the cam remote by Victor Duncan Incorporated the operator is Gary Chartron Mike Gillette is ready to kick off for Michigan. Thomas Wilshire taking over for the injured Jamie Morris, and he scored two touchdowns in the first half. Some of the Wisconsin faithful. They'll have some fun tonight. Nate Odoms and Dan Kissling awaiting the kick by Gillette. Odom's the deep man, number 38, Kissling, number 45. Odom's one of the uh, nation's leaders in all-purpose yardage. In addition to being a great defensive back, he has five interceptions, but he also runs back punts and kickoffs. 4 6 remaining in the first half. And Odom's will get a chance to run one back. Across the 20. 25 and tripped up at the 28 yard line by number 10 Alan Bishop of Michigan. Odom's quick good size too for that cornerback position. 5'11", 195. So Wisconsin now trailing by 11 points with four minutes left in the first half. Marvin Hartley and Joe Armitrout are the running backs. Mike Howard has completed seven of 12 passes for 49 yards, but he has been intercepted once by Andy Moeller, which really hurt the Badgers. The handoff to Hartley. Andy Moeller, number 49, again on the tackle, the second 10 all Big Ten selection. Gain of one, it'll be second and nine. Wiltshire capping off a five play 30 yard drive his second touchdown of the first half he now has three on the season. Reginald Tompkins is wide to the left Scott Vester wide to the right the handoff to Armin Trout nothing doing. Third long. John Schulte number 41 made the stop. His brother Tim also plays a lot uh, at linebacker for Michigan. They have three sets of twins on this Michigan team. Time winding down in the first half. There's Todd and Tim Schulte, Dave and Scott Mandel, and Bob and Rick Stites. Three sets of twins for the Wolverines. David Burks, number three, and at wide receiver for Wisconsin. Third down eight. Here comes the pressure. And the pass is incomplete. Should have caught it. He had it in his arms and he just couldn't hold on. Scott Bester was the intended receiver. Good pitch that time by Mike Hard. Scott Bester just couldn't hold it. Now, you got a guy like Jim Harborough. He's got enough time here. 243. 
Got two timeouts left. John Colasar awaiting the kick by Scott Sapicki. Sapicki is from St. Louis and apparently is a bit of a character, and they call him the free spirit of St. Louis. Good kick. Colasar at the 17. Good coverage by Wisconsin. Victor Fortino hustling downfield to make the tackle a 41 yard kick and a five yard return. 231 remaining in the first half Michigan leading Wisconsin 14 to 3. We'll go to Kevin Slade in Atlanta with scores and highlights from other college games tonight plus at halftime. Kevin will have this week's greatest game the Old Miss Alabama battle in 1969 and also we'll take a look at the Wisconsin marching band all coming up at halftime. One of college football's greatest games, let's put it that way, right? There have been a few. Jim Harbaugh on the handoff to Gerald White. Makes a tackle and is finally put down. They want to move it out. They get it out to the 30. They'll go into their hurry up offense and put the ball upstairs. May do it here. Tom Harmon, Heisman Trophy winner, great football player right here at the University of Michigan. Two-time All-American. Later had a fine career in broadcasting. He sure did. And his son, of course, uh, movie star Mark Harmon, who's a fine quarterback at UCLA. An incomplete pass. A little shovel pass. Jim Komet was all over Harbaugh. That's of course rule to pass. He drops it. It's an incomplete pass. It was that. You see a lot more of this today, college and the pros. Good defense right there by Mike Reed. He caused he caused the play to be incomplete. He got right in front of the quarterback. Saw so Komet applying the pressure. The Wolverines are glad to have him back. He missed last week's game against Wyoming with a bad shoulder, but the 253-pound senior can apply a lot of pressure. Harbaugh has completed six of 11 passes for 147 yards, but he's missed on his last three. Third down, eight. Harbaugh with time, and his pass is complete to the fullback, Perriman. Charlie Hawley there to make the tackle on him. That'll bring up a punting situation for the Wolverines. Minute 37 and counting, remaining in the first half. Wisconsin very much in this football Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Outside of that one turnover, this has been kind of an even football game. Of course, Michigan looked good early, and then that fine drive of Wisconsin, they didn't get it into the end zone with the kick to field goal, and that turnover really put them up by 11. Nate Odoms would like to have a good run back here, awaiting the boot by Monty Robbins. This will be his second putt. His first was for 40 yards. Robbins, a senior from Great Bend, Kansas. Looked like they wanted to block it, but a good booming Ooh, kick. Odom signaling for a fair catch at the 23 yard line. Great kick. So Robbins really kicked the Wolverines out of a hole, a 50 yard punt. And he kicked it very, very high. Wisconsin with all three timeouts remaining, but they were nearly charged with a couple during that uh, situation when the crowd was so loud that Jim Harbaugh of Michigan could not hear the signals. The crowd was warned and eventually they quieted down enough for Harbaugh to run a play. Marvin Hartley, number 34, Joe Armantrout, number 23 in the backfield for the Wolverines as they go to work at the Wisconsin 23. 58 seconds remaining in the half. They say Wolverines have met the Badgers. Tell you the truth, I had never really seen a live Wolverine or a live Badger. Have you? I want to tell you something. You don't want to fool with either of them. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Mike Howard on a rollout. And he kind of shot puts a pass that's complete. The number six, Reginald Tompkins, but he was unable to get out of bounds. Ivan Hicks made the tackle. Wisconsin still has three timeouts left. Second and two. Howard's pass is intercepted by Andy Moeller, his second interception of the game. It was 
intended for the tight end, Brian Anderson, I think, Mel, and the ball was kind of thrown a little bit behind his target. It was deflected and caused the interception. Ball uh, could have been caught, and it could have been a little bit better pass, too. You see the tight end over the middle. It's a little bit high. There goes the deflection. And right off the D-Bowler, second interception tonight. And Michigan may have a chance to get some more points before the first half comes to an end. 25 seconds left. The Wolverines have two timeouts remaining. Ken Higgins splits wide to the right. John Kolasar wide to the left. First out at the 38. Harbaugh back to throw. And Gerald White can't hold it. 21 seconds remaining. Tim Jordan making the hit on White. And Bo Schembechler will send into play. They got to go downfield. Nothing coming out of the backfield like what five or six yard pass patterns like that. No, no, they got to go downfield and try to pick up at least 20, 25 yards in the next 15 seconds. Greg McMurtry, number one, is in at wide receiver for Michigan. Second down to 38. Harbaugh's got a man open. Higgins complete at the 20 down to the 19 yard line. He's got a first down. 14 seconds remaining. Bobby Taylor made the tackle. Got time for another play. Said 25. They're now well within field goal range. Picked up 19 yards on that little turn-in pattern, deep turn-in pattern. He's so wide open, it's unbelievable. And I'll tell you, these receivers get this wide open. Mel Harbor will sit back there and just just pick you apart. Beautiful pitch, right on the money. Coverage very soft back there. Michigan will take a timeout, so the Wolverines have one timeout remaining. Jim Harbaugh conferring with Shem Beckler. Hey, look Another star here. from the past, one of our pals, Ron Kramer. I just left him last night. There's Ron. And, of course, he does our games on WTBS. He worked one of the games on Turner Network earlier today. He earned Indiana Northwestern. What a great football player. Best tight end I've ever seen. He was the last man. At, that is not Ron Kramer, by the way. Looks like it. He was the last man at Michigan to let her nine times. I think Ron has a hat like that, though, doesn't he? He does. He's got a lot of hats. Well, he may go for it. Could be a distant relative of Ron Kramer's. <laughs> <laughs> and Big Ten action today, Ohio State beating Illinois 14 to nothing. Iowa over Michigan State. How about that? Mm. Indiana is apparently for real. Minnesota winning big over Purdue. 14 seconds remaining. Michigan has one timeout left. The Wolverines lead 14 to 3. Harvest pass is complete to Kenny Higgins, and he's out of bounds to stop the clock. He's out at the 11-yard line. They got a little decision to make here. You go ahead and kick the field goal. You got nine seconds. Time for one more play if it's a quick action. The only problem here is if it's a completion inbounds and a guy makes a wrong cut and he tries to store and he gets over the middle. If he doesn't get in, the time, clock will run out. The Michigan kicker, Pat Moons, earlier missed from 26 yards. It's second down one, nine seconds remaining. Probably throw this one into the end zone. Harbaugh on the move, throwing into the end zone, and he throws it clear into the stand throwing it away as no one was open. He wanted to go to Colasar, but he was well covered. And we have three seconds remaining in the half, and Pat Moons will come in to try a field goal. Smart move. Didn't want to risk the interception. Didn't want to force it in there. Just threw it out of bounds. He really threw it out of bounds. Moons, who's made four of eight on the season. This attempt will be from the 18, so it's a 28-yard field goal. Looked like one of my passes when I wasn't trying to throw it out of bounds. two for three from this range. You mentioned he missed a 26 yarder earlier. And this kick is good. So Michigan is able to score again and that will bring the first half to an end. It's the end of the first half from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison Wisconsin with the score the Michigan Wolverines 17 and the Badgers of Wisconsin three. We'll be right back.
Bill Proctor with Paul Horning back in Madison, Wisconsin, where fourth rank Michigan leads Wisconsin 17 to 3 at the half. And you're looking at the Wisconsin band, and they really excited this crowd. What a job they do, Paul. What a fantastic halftime performance. I tell you, the bands don't get enough credit. 77,000 people were up on their feet in recognition of one of the great performances I've seen of Wisconsin Badger Band. Just simply fantastic. All right, let's take a look at the first half highlights. Well, of course, most of it was the University of Michigan here. It was the first big play of the ball game. This is John Colser on a straight fly pattern on a beautiful pitch by Jim Harbaugh. 40-yard pickup set up the first touchdown, and it was scored by their fine running back, Thomas Wilcher, a five-yard TD run as he ran over Mike Reed and carried him into the end zone. Seven to nothing. Later on, what a beautiful interception this was for Andy Moeller. It set up another score by Thomas Wilcher over the right side, his second touchdown. It was 14 to three. And then Pat Boots kicked the field goal just before the end of the first half to make it 17 to three, and that's where we stand at halftime. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Michigan won the coin toss prior to the start of the game, so they deferred until the second half, so the Wolverines will be receiving to open the second half, but let's take a look at the first half statistics. And Michigan with 11 first downs, but look at the total yards, Mel, 241 to 107. Been very, very tough for Michigan, I mean for Wisconsin, really to move the football outside that one series when they took it down and put three points on the board. Well, Wisconsin had the ball and were moving twice and twice Moeller intercepted passes. And it set up 10 points. It was 7 to 3 at the time. So those two interceptions figured prominently into the score. It's now 17 to 3. The difference seemed to be that Michigan was able to complete a lot of long passes by Jim Harper. Most of Mike Howard's passes were short of the 5 to 15 yard variety. The Michigan capped off a pair of drives with Thomas Wiltshire touchdowns and then a field goal before the end of the first half by Pat Moons, and it's 17 to 3. <laughs> Lawrence Welk fans here at the University there of Wisconsin. A lot of them in Wisconsin. A one and a two. That's been their offense so far. A one and a two <laughs> and a three and, and a, a punt. punt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mel. Try, Todd Gregory will kick off. For Wisconsin, the Badgers wearing the Cardinal jerseys, white pants, and white helmets. Capacity crowd of over 77,000 here at Camp Randall Stadium. This third quarter will be interesting to see if Wisconsin can score because Michigan has not allowed the opposition to score in the third quarter in each of their last two games, and the Wolverines have allowed only six points total in the third quarter this year. <laughs> yep. Michigan going to receive the football as you said and really the pressures right off the bats on the defense for the Badgers they've got to get that football back in good field position and let Mike Hart operate where he can move the football and not have those deflected passes somebody's open over the middle you can't drill it knock a guy down you got to put a little touch on the pass the way Harbaugh Harbaugh does it 48 Ernie Holloway and 40 John Collisar winning the kick by Todd Gregory in the second half Underway here in Wisconsin. And again, a high short kick. Taken by Bob Perryman at the 25. And he's brought down to the 30-yard line. So that apparently they want to keep the ball away from the dangerous deep man, particularly Colasar. Victor Fortino made the tackle. Well, they're giving up pretty good field position when they do that. Short kicks, they got it at the 30. Kind of strange, but they've done it more than once. Absolutely. You know, and with the uh, collegiate kicking just off from the 35-yard line this year, it's even stranger. Yeah, maybe the guy just I don't know can't what he's either. I don't know. <laughs> he may be playing in the Wisconsin band next week. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be pretty tough to make that band. The handoff to Gerald White on first down. White has carried the ball sparingly, but what a great job he's done blocking for Thomas Wiltshire. But, but you know, sometimes, you know, he plays the up back in the in the wishbone he gets a few plays that kind of surprises the defense because they're not used to looking at any quick openers in this offense for Michigan because usually the tailback and the sweeps and the pitches then all of a sudden they hit white up up the gut rear very quick and he gets a, a little bit of an edge that way Mel because he can pop through there and pick up that quick six or seven Gerald White with a pickup of four yards so it'll be second down and six 
The fake to Wiltshire. Harbaugh going long on second got down. He's got the freshman, Greg McMurtry. And he's dragged down inside the five-yard line by Nate Odoms. It'll be first and goal to go for Michigan, a 64-yard game. I'll tell you, Jim Harbaugh's got tremendous touch on the football. He got the speedy McMurphy, the freshman, 6'3", 200 pounds, and they're going to be high on this young man. And off the play action, there's the counter action. Looked like it was going to throw it to Wilshire, and, and I'll tell you, Harbaugh got hit. He still put it right on the money. McMurtry almost goes in. And that's Nate Odom saves six points. McMurtry wearing number one, formerly worn by All-American Anthony Carter. Absolutely. And you saw Harbor get hit just he released. Wishbone formation, first and goal to go for the Wolverines. The fake to Perriman. Harbaugh, the keeper, down near the goal line, stopped at about the one-yard line by Tim Jordan, number 95. They go to the wishbone when they get down inside the 10-yard line. So Greg McMurtry, number one, making that long reception. One of the reasons he wears number one is because he was a first-round draft pick of the Boston Red Sox last spring. He's a great baseball player. Got some talent. Second down, goal to go at the one-yard line. Good stay. Boy, I'll tell you. Let's see if they give it to Thomas Wilcher. He's got two already tonight. Wilcher, White, Perriman in the backfield. It's Wiltshire in for his third touchdown of the game, but there is a penalty marker down. Somebody moved on the left side. It's going to go against Michigan. A little anxious on the left side. Looked like Mike Huzar, I think, number 74. Is he in there? Illegal procedure against Michigan. Again, our referee is Tom Quinn of the Big Ten. Watch the bottom of your screen. There he is. I think it's 74, isn't it? It's one of the tight ends. It's Jeff, Jeff Brown. Brown. They had two tight ends in there on the wishbone alignment. Yeah, Huzar is the left tackle. Was the left tight end. Illegal procedure. On the offense. First down. So it'll be second down and goal to go at the six. John Kolasar is wide to the right. Again, the wishbone with Wiltshire. Yeah. Perriman and White. Harbaugh threw three touchdown passes last year against Wisconsin. He's changing the play now. Or he's motioning something to his backs. Not, he he's can't in. hear. He can't hear again. Here we go. He said, I don't want to call a snap count. He's trying to get the referee's attention to inform him that he simply couldn't uh, call the signal because no one could hear it. We have the same situation occur in the first half. Looks like Wisconsin has taken a timeout. Either that or the charge with a timeout or a result of the, the crowd time noise. Forced timeout. Well, that's what has happened. Wisconsin has been charged with a timeout due to excessive crowd noise. They were warned in the first half. It occurred again here in the second half. So they have two timeouts remaining. And we'll take a break with the score. Michigan 17, Wisconsin 3. Michigan quarterback Jim Harbaugh again trying to get off a play but having difficulty with a very raucous crowd here at Camp Randall Stadium. Wisconsin has already been charged with one timeout due to excessive crowd noise. If it happens again, they'll be charged with another timeout. They could end up using all of their timeouts here. Yep. I don't think it's excessive right now from our vantage point. Of course, we're very, very high. This is a tremendous stadium here. Seats 77,000. We're going to try to get it off. Second down and there goal go. from the six. And the Wisconsin players are saying, come on, he can hear. That's right. Come on, Jim, get underneath there. And of course, when he gets underneath there, the crowd <laughs> It's like he's orchestrating the crowd. As That's soon right. as he puts his hands up under center, they get louder. <laughs> when he stands up, they quiet down. Leading to the official, referee Tom Quinn, who says, please give it a try so this game can continue. We're going to go this time. No, we're not. <laughs> Come on. Jim Harbaugh must feel like Arthur Fiedler. Ah, uh, let's go. 
referee's going to tell him, let's go. He's going to come over. going to give him another. going to charge another timeout. Tom Quinn coming over to talk to Jim Hillis. They're down to two timeouts now, and that could prove to be very important. Michigan leads 17 to 3, opening minutes of the second half. Meanwhile, Bo Schembechler talking with his quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. Yep. If Bo Schembechler had not offered Harbaugh a scholarship to Michigan, he said he would have gone to Wisconsin because he really liked the late coach of the Badgers, Dave McLean. Dave McLean. Yeah. He said, if Bo hadn't recruited me, I would have been in a Wisconsin uniform. And next week, we got a little time here. We got a good one, boys. Stanford and Washington. Washington rebounded big against California today. They got the win. And Stanford, of course, with their fine quarterback, John Pay. There it is. Next week, we'll be in San Francisco, Palo Alto. You'll be joined by Skip yeah. Carey next week for that game. Yep. So Jim Harbaugh will tie it again. Second down goal to go at the six. And it's getting louder. And the longer he waits, the louder this crowd gets. But you know what? you got to look at it as far as Jim Harbour is concerned. Did you ever run into that problem oh, with yeah, Notre Dame? Oh, yeah, we've had it three or four times. And I tell you, you don't, as a quarterback, and I've seen Bart Starr, and when we were at the Packers, we ran into a few times. And listen, all you got to say, listen, I'm not going to snap the football. You don't have to do it when there's just a little bit of a doubt there. So... Uh, you don't want to take a chance on somebody going off sides, not hearing the count, not getting off on time. So you, it's an offensive type of a thing. They're going to get a little bit of an edge here. I mean, it might not seem as loud to us way up here, as loud to maybe some of them down there, but the offense, when you're on the field, it is, it is a little bit louder. And while we have a moment, we'd like to mention the lighting for tonight's game is being provided by Musco Lighting of Oskaloosa, Iowa. This is Wisconsin's first night game here at Randall Stadium. Well, we've been stopped now for about four or five minutes. Let's see if we, here we go again, folks. Stay with us. We got a good one. I hope Jim Harbaugh realizes okay. that he may cause you to miss last call. Yeah. <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> going to do it forget the play by now there he goes again they haven't charged him with the timeout so it's that's what's going to happen next unless this yeah. crowd cooperates All gotta do is get it on a quick count of course you might have to tell the defense we're going to run this on a quick count boys just to get it started <laughs> Those linemen are going to get tired. That's right, and they're going to forget the, three the snap count. You're going to forget the snap count. I just saw the tight end look back to the right halfback as, as if to say, what's the count, what's the count? And he told him. Gerald White. And Gerald White, Bob Perryman, and Thomas Wilcher. Jim Harbaugh's eligibility may expire before he gets off a play. <laughs> oh, what a fantastic night he's having. Over 200 yards already. Phil Webb is now in the backfield for Michigan, number 46. Yeah, he's not going to do it. Now they're going to have to do something. It's getting a little bit ridiculous both ways, I think. Kind of a flip of the coin up here. I don't know. This is the longest delay I've ever yeah. seen because of crowd now, noise. I think if it were really the fault of the crowd, I think the referee's thinking here as well. I think he could go ahead and get the count off if he wanted to. I'm not going to charge him with the timeout until it really gets bad. Now it's getting a little bit louder. Now if it was re really, really bad in Mr. Quinn's mind, he would have charged another timeout by now to Wisconsin. But he can't do anything against the offense because, as I said, they're giving a little bit of an edge to the offense. Jim Harbaugh to try it again. There he Here we go. Bob Perriman is inside the five. Down to about the three-yard line where Michael Boykins, the nose guard, makes a stop. So that'll bring up a third and goal situation from the three.
Bob Perriman, the fourth leading rusher last year for the Wolverines. He once rushed for over 300 yards in a single high school game in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Great, huh? Like that. The Wolverines go to two tight ends with Jeff Brown, number 80, Derek Walker, number 89. Again, the wishbone. The third good. goal to go. Gerald White, the deep man in the eye. Colasar splits out wide to the right. Play action fake. Harper's pass is complete for a touchdown to number 22, Gerald White. Play action pass that faked the White coming out of the deep man in the eye. He just went into the end zone, hooked up, and Harbor put it right low. Couldn't be intercepted. First touchdown pass of the night for him and number four on the year. Gerald White caught two touchdown passes last year against Wisconsin, and he's got one tonight. Here it is now, now watch 22. He's coming right, right towards you, right in the screen. He's going to catch a pass. Seems slide to the right. The pass is low. Good camera work there for six points. Pat Moons with the conversion kick. Monty Robbins holding. And the kick is perfect. Well, oh, Michigan is on the board again, and with 12-19 remaining in the third quarter, it's now Michigan 24 and Wisconsin 3. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Wisconsin. Bill Proctor with Paul Horning back at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, where the Michigan Wolverines are beginning to open things up a bit. A three-yard touchdown pass from Jim Harbaugh to Gerald White. White's second reception of the year for a touchdown. Mike Gillette will kick off for Michigan. Nate Odom's 38. Back deep along with number 45. Dan Kisling. Thomas Wiltshire has run for two touchdowns. Jim Harbaugh has passed for one. And a field goal by Pat Moons accounting for the Michigan scoring. This is Odom's at the seven. Across the 20, 25. If he can get a block, he may have something going, but he couldn't turn the corner, and he's brought down to 27-yard line by Tim Schulte. 16-yard return by Nate Odoms. A three-yard touchdown pass from Harbour to White, counting a five-play 69-yard drive. We've got a new quarterback for Wisconsin. Bud Keys takes over for Mike Howard. He's a 6'3 junior from Green Bay. Green Bay, Wisconsin, 6'3", 215. The handoff to Marvin Hartley. Tripped up out of bounds. Missed the hole. He should have cut back up inside. Dieter Heron, number 35, brought him down. Bud Keys, a better scrambler than Mike Howard. Yep. And I think that Jim Hillis had made up his mind. I'm going to go with hard the first half. And, of course, if we're behind, a touchdown or two, I'm going to go to the junior and see if he can. You know, sometimes a different quarterback will come in, give you a different look, and do a few different things, and gets the defense off balance. Keys played in seven games last year as a sophomore. Second down, eight. The handoff to Joe Armantrout. A scuffle breaking out between... One of the linemen for Wisconsin, Todd Nelson and Andy Moeller of Michigan. Moeller, number 49. He had two interceptions in the first half. He's the leading tackler on this team. Second team, all Big Ten selection a year ago. Well, if he can scramble and he can throw it, we're going to see it right here. Passing situation. Third down eight. Play action fake. Key's pass is incomplete. It was thrown behind the intended receiver. Number 88, Brian Anderson, to tie it in. Dieter Heron deflected the pass, knocked it out of bounds. So a punting situation for Wisconsin as Scott Sapicki comes on. John Kolasar is back deep. He averages 8.5 yards per punt return. In the first half, Sapicki punted three times for an average of 44 yards. He got off a 51-yarder in the first half. And another good booming kick. Yes, good hang time, too. Kolasar at the 19. 
Good coverage by the Badgers. Here's the flag down. Penalty marker back at the 31 yard line. Philip Waters made the tackle, a 51 yard punt by Sapicki. Defensive holding coming up against after the punt. Let's see if it was after the punt. We have holding on the, on the receiving team beyond the neutral zone, post scrimmage kick spot, 10 yards. After the punt. So be Michigan football, they'll take a 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage after the return, and we'll start it off. We have 10-41 remaining in the third quarter. Michigan leading by a score of 24-3. The walk-off against the Wolverines. Michigan ranked fourth in just about every poll coming into this game. Trying to win their fourth straight game. In 1981, when they lost to Wisconsin, they were top-ranked and undefeated at the time. Well, they need something big to happen to them right now, and uh, they need a turnover right down here deep in Michigan territory to try to post, just hoping to get seven points on the board quickly and turn, it, turn something around for them. Harborough has just been sensational tonight. Elsewhere in college football action, Cincinnati leading Louisville 24-7 in the second quarter. I don't like Syracuse leading Missouri at the half. First and ten for Michigan at the ten-yard line. The handoff to the fullback, Bob Perryman. Boy, he took a hit and just buried his head and picked up about two more yards. Just carried Michael Boykins, the nose tackle, with it. Hey, all these Michigan backs, I tell you, they must be taught the same thing. Every one of them gets extra yardage after they seem to be hit at the line of scrimmage. They all run very, very hard. Benny Testaverde and Miami leading 28 to nothing at the half against Northern Illinois. Bob Perryman has carried five times for 18 yards so far. Well, I'll tell you one thing, if something unbelievable doesn't happen, I think you can almost write up the Heisman Trophy for Vinny Testaverde right now. Would you think so, Mel? I would agree with you. It's a great performance against Oklahoma. It's Perryman again. Showing that tremendous power, dragging three tacklers with him. It was Michael Reed who first put the hit on him. You see that extra churning? The legs keep churning. Got the first down, I think. Very close. See where they're marking. Yes, sir. The three Michigan backs, White, Perriman, Wiltshire, have all been impressive. And remember, they're playing without their leading rusher, Jamie Morris, the younger brother of the Giants, Joe Morris, who's out with a bad knee. So Perriman gives the Wolverines a first down at the 20-yard line, 9.49 remaining in the third quarter. Kolasar is wide to the left. Kenny Higgins is wide to the right. Perriman in the backfield along with Wilcher. Collision, a broken play, and Harbaugh gets trampled by his own man. Obviously a mix-up of some kind yeah. on the play. Execution, broken play, somebody went the wrong way. See the quarterback. Uh, that back didn't want it, he wanted to block. You see that, that's Bob Perryman. Loss of three yards on the play. Greg McMurtry, who hauled in that long pass earlier in this half, is in with a play. He was a Massachusetts Player of the Year last year when he scored 22 touchdowns his senior year. He's number one. Third down, 13. Second, beg your pardon, second down, 13. Harvest pass is complete to White at the 25. Riding down close to a first down, but he appears to be short. Dan Kissling, number 45, made the tackle for Wisconsin. I tell you, he's dangerous coming out of that back room. When Gerald White gets the deep man to the eye, very good pass receiver. And Harborough looks for him after the fake. He just finds the open hole in there and hooks up. Third down, short yardage. The Wolverines will go with two tight ends. Jeff Brown, number 80, and Derek Walker, number 89. Gerald White has three receptions for 14 yards. They go to the wishbone. And off to Wiltshire. He's got the first down. Good football team. Good football team. You're witnessing tonight in Michigan. Michael Reed again on the stop for Wisconsin. Right. What a marvelous game he's played. He sure has. But they're a little bit too strong. 
the Wolverines ranked in the top 10, of course, year in and year out, it seems. Wiltshire has carried 14 times for 66 yards and two touchdowns. Eight minutes left, third quarter. Michigan piling up the first downs. Wisconsin with only six. Carolyn and Wiltshire in the eye. Changing the play. Wiltshire. And look at those huge holes that that Michigan offensive line is blowing open. Well, I tell you, he's per he looks like a perfect back to me for, for the eye back. He's a great eye back. He's got good sense running the football. If you take a look at it from the eye, he just knows when that hole's going to open. That's an instinct, too, folks. When you're a deep man in the eye back there. You've got to have that knack of just knowing when to cut. It comes I have natural. A face mask on the defense, unsportsmanlike defense. Two fouls against Wisconsin. Yep. And uh, if Michigan keeps it up here in the third quarter and they put any kind of points on the board, I think that may be all we'll see of Jim Harbaugh for the evening. He has just looked sensational. What's Harbaugh's? We'll get to his stats in a minute. He's 12 out of 19 for 230 yards. They'll accept the face mask penalty against Wisconsin. So that will give Michigan a first down of the 39 of the Badgers. Unsportsmanlike contest. Unsportsmanlike foul. Get the defense. First down. She must be a Wisconsin fan. <laughs> Doesn't look too happy. Over 19, 230 yards and a touchdown. The nation's most efficient passer a year ago, currently ranked third in NCAA stats, and the handoff is the fullback, Bob Perriman. Michigan just grinding it out. David Wings, number 48, made the tackle for Wisconsin. They're also grinding time off that clock. It's amazing. The Wolverines have allowed only six points in the third quarter this year. Wisconsin will be lucky to get their hands back on the football the way right, Michigan going. is controlling things. Kenny right. Higgins is wide to the right. You have to put it up. And then, of course, if he does have to put it up, it seems as if everybody's open. Harbaugh, again with time. Look He's got here. a man wide open. The tight end, Jeffrey Brown, has a first down near the 20. Not only was he open, Mel, everybody else was open, too, so... It's, it's one of those things when he goes back, he says, oh, first guy he looks at is open, so he's going to throw it. A gain of 14 yards on the play. Michigan threatening to blow this game wide open. It was 17-3 to Michigan at the half. His two turnovers put 10 points on the board, and then it slowly slips away. Oh, it's a good football game. This Michigan team hasn't made too many mistakes tonight. They've looked sharp offensively and defensively. Look at those stats, third quarter. Six points. On first down, it's Perriman on the sweep. Written out of bounds near the 15-yard line by Michael Reed and Bobby Taylor. Michael Reed is having one of the better games I've ever seen by a collegiate linebacker. <laughs> He's all over the field. He's about the only only thing defensively. He's uh, let's put it this way. He gets his chance to make a few tackles because everybody at the line of scrimmage is blocked in those linebackers. It's right comes right to you. Gain of six yards on first down. So it'll be second down at four. Less than six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Wiltshire and Perryman in the eye formation. Play action fake. Harbaugh on a roll out. Into the end zone. Uh, interference, incomplete. Interference and the flag goes. He got knocked down. He Tried to go to Ken Higgins, but you know, I think if Harbaugh wanted to run that one in, he could have gone in untouched. I tell you what, they had about 15 yard. He had some room to run it. He probably would have got some reaction out of that, too, of course, Mel, but he's wide open over here. Look at here. You're right. He's got a lot of daylight here. Now he kind of slows it up. Now there's a defender over on the left side too, but look, he, he got hit before the ball got there. Number 45 is Dan Kissling on the interference. Put an elbow on Ken Higgins back. 
And it's pass interference against Wisconsin. <laughs> so that'll be a first and goal situation for the Wolverines at the two. Pretty nice sustained drive. This ball started inside the 10 yard line. Defensive pass interference. Automatic first down, two yard line. And you would expect the Wolverines to go to the wishbone. Michigan leading 24-3. Perriman, Wiltshire, and White, the wishbone, two tight ends. The crowd doing their best to make life difficult for Jim Harbaugh, but he's in control now, and it's Wiltshire stop cold. Guess who hit him again? Michael Reed, number 52. Mr. Reed from Albany, Georgia. Well, he had 14 tackles last week against Wyoming, he's and he's got in that double now, figures again this week. He's got that now, I think. It's like John Colasar may be shaken up as he leaves the game. Second down, goal to go from the four, loss of two yards on the play. This drive has lasted at least seven or eight minutes. Harbaugh running the option on the keeper. He's in for a touchdown. And that'll be all for Mr. Harbaugh. What a night. Scored a touchdown through a touchdown pass. He's thrown the football for over 240 yards. And there's still four, four, four minutes, 48 seconds to go, third quarter. And one of those big bodyguards going off the field with him, number 67, John Vitale, the center. You have to give a lot of credit on Michigan offensive line, controlling the line of scrimmage. So it's now 30 to 3 in favor of Michigan. Pat Moons is in again with Monty Robbins holding. A four yard run by Jim Harbaugh for the touchdown, his second rushing touchdown of the year. And Moons' kick is perfect. So the Wolverines of Michigan have taken over and with 448 remaining in the third quarter here at Camp Randall Stadium it's now Michigan 31 and Wisconsin 3. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealers who invite you to see the 1986 Ford cars and trucks. Have you driven a Ford lately? Mel Proctor with Paul Horning back in Madison, Wisconsin, where Michigan leads Wisconsin 31 to 3. Dan Kissling and Nate Odoms awaiting the kick. Low line drive kick. Oh, and a lot of hitting going on down on that field as Dan Kissling brings it back to the 26. See who's at quarterback for Wisconsin. They've used both Mike Howard and Bud Keys this evening. They'll come with Keys. Michigan with an 11 play, 90 yard drive, capped off by a three yard run by Jim Harbaugh, who's had a tremendous game. Bud Keys indeed at quarterback. He passed for 829 yards and eight touchdowns last year as a sophomore three touchdown passes in one game against Nevada Las Vegas and he'll go to the air on first down there. pass is complete Scott Bester on the reception for a first down that's his first catch of the year Mr. Bester no he caught one early in the first half all right that's right he did catch one. Bester making his First collegiate start this afternoon or this evening, and you were visiting with his father. That's right, his father. I ran into his father, and he says, "Paul, you won't remember me, but I was with with you in Green Bay your rookie year. Locker next to you for a while during the training camp." His dad, Glenn, was a football player and a wrestler here at Wisconsin in the fifties. Kid's got a good Bester strong arm. again, ridden out of bounds near midfield. Garland River has knocked Bester out of bounds as we look at Bud Keys. Jim Hillis evaluated his two quarterbacks on the basis of last week's performance against Wyoming and on what he saw for the practice sessions on Monday and Tuesday and decided to go with Howard, the more experienced of the two. But 
In the second half, he's gone with Bud Keys. They haven't gone too much to Reggie Tompkins at all. He's their leading pass receiver. Back to the first half, no Wisconsin wide receiver caught more than one pass. Keys' pass is complete. The reception by Brant Kennedy, and he's rudely knocked out of bounds. And let's go back to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta for an update. In a game that will be a major upset if it continues, Temple is leading Pitt tonight. They're now in the fourth quarter, 19-13. A lot of people thought Pitt was a lock, but not so. 25-0 Kentucky over Southern Miss, also in the fourth. Let's go back to Madison. Mel Proctor with Paul Horning at Camp Randall Stadium before a sellout crowd of over 77,000 as the third quarter winds down. Wisconsin trying to get on the board and end this string by Michigan of not allowing the opposition to score. No! Uh, third quarter of the last two games. Pass is complete. Bill Williams on the reception. So Jim Hillis, the Wisconsin coach, doing a lot of substituting in this second half. Gain of six, it'll be second down and four. Michigan leading 31 to three. Tompkins is wide to the left. Bester split to the right. Hartley and Arbit try to the running backs. Arbit Hartley breaking tackles. Inside the 30, still on his feet, down to the 25-yard line. A good run by Marvin Hartley. Tim Scholey, number 29, finally stopped him. Good hard running for the first down. Marvin Hartley breaks a tackle there. Got the first down. He's got 23 yards rushing. He made his first collegiate start last year against Indiana. And his first start rushed for 74 yards. Big, strong back. First down for the Badgers. Got a triple on the left. But keys to throw. And it's intercepted. The third yes, interception of the game by Andy Moeller. Oh, I tell you, that wasn't the quarterback's fault. They blitzed him. They blitzed him. Todd Schulte Wright came in on the quarterback, and he really caused him to rush the pitch. And Andy Moeller, that's three, three tonight. Wow. Two in the first half and one in the second half for Moeller. Now watch the interception. There's 41, and we'll be back in a minute. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Michigan's Bo Schembechler well on his way to his 200th victory as a collegiate coach. He is also closing in on the legendary Fielding H. Yost with the all-time victories at Michigan. He needs seven victories to pass Yost to 165 games as the Wolverines head coach. First unit is still in there for the Wolverines. And that surprises me. I, I didn't think we'd see any more of Harbaugh. Maybe, maybe he had his mind made up. He's going to play the third quarter if he did well. Maybe... But I don't think they need uh, Jim Harbaugh in there. Bob so. Perryman on the carry for five yards on first down. Well, not only is Harbaugh in yeah. there, but Perryman and Wiltshire, the starting running backs, the entire offensive line is still in there. He's got a guy named Chris Zerbrug that he could give a little experience playing time to right now. Kenny Higgins is wide to the left. John Colasar split wide to the right. Gerald White, 22, and Bob Perryman, 37, in the I formation. White down by David Wings, number 48. And they're going to measure for it. Bo Schembechler, who leads active Division 1A coaches in victory. We mentioned that he has 199 wins. And there's the rest of the list. Right on cue. Joe Paterno with 191. Vince Dooley picked up another today. What a cast that is. Great coaches. Don't forget Eddie Robbins down at Grambling. Because that's not well, this Division 1. This is just Division 1. I know it, but you Eddie got has to mention him, boys. 322 wins. Yes, Grambling. Well, they're short of the first down. It's third down one. The Wolverines go to the wishbone. Perryman over the top. Got it. 
Tim Jordan tried to time his leap and go up with him to stop him. First down. Michigan with 17 first downs. Wisconsin has nine. 2.04 remaining in the third quarter. And Michigan just dominating the time of possession in this third quarter. Wisconsin did have one drive going, but Andy Moeller came up with his third interception of the game to choke off another Wisconsin bid. Wide in Perriman in the eye. The handoff to Perriman for a couple of yards. And now let's go to Kevin Sladen in Atlanta with an update. All right, Mel, a couple of teams in search of their first victory. Looks like they may get them. Syracuse 0-4 coming into the night, pounding Missouri 31-9 in the third quarter. Vanderbilt winless, leads Duke 10-3 in the second. Let's go back to Wisconsin. Well, it looks like Wisconsin may not get their hands on the football again in this third quarter. Second down six for Michigan, a minute 20 left in the quarter. Michigan leading 31-3. Harbaugh. Going long, he's got Higgins, and he makes the reception. There's a penalty marker down as he's wrestled down by Bobby Taylor. But what a catch by Ken Higgins. That's the fourth pass tonight that Harbor has just absolutely been sensational with great touch. Fourth pass tonight completed over 30 yards. Look at this pitch right down the sidelines. Kenny Higgins. With a nice touch. One, two, three, sets up like face guarding by Bobby sure Taylor was. and the flag absolutely was thrown Bobby Taylor interference on the defense decline the pass is complete will take the game first down pass interference but they will decline the penalty and take the 39 yard game which I think it should be tacked on there I've always felt that the defensive pass interference Guy makes a good catch. There's no penalty. They get the ball there. There is a penalty. They still get the ball there. I don't know. It protects it if it's incomplete, but I think it should be tacked on. First down to 28. Paravin following one of those big linemen for about eight yards on first down. He just rode the block of the right tackle, John Elliott. Guess who's on the stop again? Michael Reed played a tremendous football game for Wisconsin. You know, but that tells you something about what's happening in this game when we continually call Reed's name because they're just blowing the Absolutely. defensive front right off the line and forcing the linebackers in the secondary to make the stops. Second down and three. Gerald White fumbles the football. And it looks like Wisconsin has it. They do. Michael Boykins recovered. Got a little cute, try to get outside. Just a little off tackle play. He's got to control the football and just pops it off. Gerald White, Rick Graff. Rick Graff made the hit and Boykins recovered the football. 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Wisconsin with three turnovers, Michigan with only one. But Key's still at quarterback. Harley and Armitrout are the running backs. Receiver is wide open. Armitrout breaking tackles. He's got a first down. Steve Thiebert, number 86, finally stopped him. But a hard run by Joe Armitrout, who's certainly not at full strength physically, but playing very well. I tell you, Bud Keys has looked pretty good here in the last couple of series. He rolls around out there. He's got the good arm. Finds an open man. Goes back against the green. Complete. First down. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. So Wisconsin goes the entire quarter without scoring. That marks the third straight game that Michigan has prevented the opposition from scoring in the third quarter. At the end of three, it's Michigan 31, Wisconsin 3. You're watching Superstation WTBS. 
Portions of tonight's game are being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aids for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all that you do, this Bud's for you. Mel Proctor with Paul Horning back at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. Bud Key's on the move, and his pass is complete to Joe Armentrout. They've been pretty successful with that short stuff. A little roll out and hit the back of the tight end on a little delay. Have, as you said, Mel, they haven't completed much to their wide receivers all, all night long. Well, Wisconsin was shut out in the third quarter to make matters worse. Wisconsin has been outscored 42 to 6 in the fourth quarter of games this year. Second down and one. Marvin Artley and Joe Armantrout in the I formation. The handoff to Artley who fumbles the football and it looks like Michigan may have recovered. The Wolverines have it. Another costly Wisconsin turnover as J.J. Grant, number 95, recovered the fumble. Oh, J.J. got it. All right. Wisconsin, I think the only thing that they see tonight, you see the ball pop loose right at the, right at the line of scrimmage. And J.J.'s got it. Michigan's back in business. About 15. My cold's about ready to just absolutely kill me. Jim Harbaugh is still at quarterback. With the Wolverines leading 31 to 3. Bob Perriman is at fullback. Gerald White is the tailback. The first unit is still in there. White rumbling through a gaping hole. And let's go back to Kevin Slade in Atlanta with an update. All right, Mel. Texas has won 20 in a row from Rice, trying to make it 21 tonight, and they lead 14-6 in the second quarter. SMU and Boston College wage an award, tied at 14 in the second quarter. Back to Wisconsin. In the third quarter, Michigan controlled the football for 11 minutes and 28 seconds. Wisconsin had the ball for only 3 minutes and 32 seconds. They also have about 435 yards in offense so far. Second down, 6. It's Perriman running right up the back of one of his blockers, Michael Dames, number 76. The safest thing you can do if you're a Michigan running back, just get behind one of those big linemen and follow them. And they are big. Did you say they average two? 285 average. John Elliott, the right tackle, is the biggest at 306. Michael Dames, the left guard, is the smallest at 258. Well, last week we saw Washington. They averaged 283 from tackle to tackle. And we'll see them next week against Stanford. Stanford's 4 0. First time since 52 through fine quarterback John Bay. Short yardage situation. The Wolverines go to the wishbone. Thomas Wiltshire. Looks like he had the first down the yardage before being driven back by Bobby Taylor and friends. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Big Ten Conference. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference or the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. Might be a little short, maybe. Yes, a little short. Looks like they're going to measure. I'm going to say they're short. Well, it looked like Wisconsin might have a chance at the half. Michigan led by only 17 to 3, but they outscored Wisconsin 14 to nothing in the third quarter. Jim Harbaugh passing for one touchdown and running for another. And what a day Thomas Wilcher has had, rushing for 73 yards, filling in for Jamie Morris, and he scored two touchdowns. <laughs> Shows you how deep this Michigan team is when they play without players like Morris and Paul Jokic, the six foot eight inch wide receiver. People like Ken Higgins step in and have a big game with Wilcher. Right. Maybe that's why they're still in there because they haven't seen that much action and Bo wants to really get give him a look, let him work with Harbaugh. I don't know, but 28-point lead here. I don't know if Wisconsin scored two touchdowns. They stayed out there for a week. All you and Skip Carey will be outside right. for California next week for the Pac-10 matchup. Skip Washington. Moves. Skip what was his name? Skip Carey. All right. Gonna run around San Francisco with him. That could be dangerous. They're short of the first down. It's fourth and one. 
Harbaugh on the keeper. He's got the first down. Rick Graff, number 99, made the tackle for Wisconsin. Graff who missed the second half of last year with uh, knee problems. The Wisconsin faithful beginning to lead. That's the 20th first down for the Michigan Wolverines this evening. Greg McMurtry is wide to the left. Ken Higgins split wide to the right. Perriman and White in the eye formation. Harbaugh on the rollout. He fires and it's incomplete. Ken Higgins was out of bounds when he made the reception. Bobby Taylor was covering defensively for Wisconsin. Miami blowing out Northern Illinois, 34 to nothing, as expected. Vinny Testaverde piling up the Heisman Trophy votes. Vanderbilt, 10-3 over Duke, third quarter. Mississippi State, 17-10. Memphis State. Jim Harbaugh, 14 out of 22, 289 yards. Second down, 10. Play action. Loads of time. Complete to Higgins. He's got a first down at the 22-yard line. The quick release. David Wings made the tackle for Wisconsin. I tell you what a night. Everybody's been open. He's got all the time in the world to throw the football. I tell you, this is the kind of night quarterback dreams about. Just stand back there. He could have, he could have waited another three seconds. Eight catches for Mr. Higgins tonight, 100 and 164 yards. He only had seven receptions coming into the game. First down at the 21 of Wisconsin. Harbor's over 300 yards. He's got a man open, but Jeffrey Brown, the tight end, drops the football. The big guy from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Bob All he had to do was catch it, That's turn it. up field, and he had six. It was too easy. It was too easy, Mel. I tell you, Harbaugh has just looked great. But I tell you, if you get all the time to throw the football and you got a good arm, and he does have a good arm, put it right there. Should have been caught. Thomas Wiltshire, number 27, is back in at tailback, replacing Gerald White. Second down at 10. McMurtry is wide to the left. Colasar wide to the right. On the handoff, Wiltshire. Inside the 20. And tripped up on a fine tackle by number 45, Dan Kissling of Wisconsin. Wiltshire, a tough man to bring down the open field. Well, he'll learn something on that play because he'll get the feel for that. He should have taken about two steps left, cut, and cut straight up field that time. He tried to get outside and it wasn't there. 11 08 remaining in the game. Michigan leading 31 to 3. The only Wisconsin score came on a 35-yard field goal by Todd Gregory in the first half. I tell you, this, I did 77,000 people. Nobody has left. Harbaugh inside the 15, out of bounds near the 10, chased out by Bobby Taylor. Jim Harbaugh called by Bo Schembechler, the best professional quarterback prospect he's ever coached at Michigan. Just seems to have that, that ability to uh, stay cool under pressure, avoid the rush, buy a little time when it's needed until he can locate an open receiver. He's a good enough runner that he can run for a first right. down or a touchdown when needed, as he's done tonight. Almost taking four, well, it's four minutes, 15 seconds off that clock in this series. They really put on some sustained drives. I mean, they've driven over 70 yards on three for three occasions tonight for scores. And on fourth and one, the Wolverines go to the wishbone. Quarterback sneak. There's not even a man head up the center. You make it so easy. It'd be unbelievable. There he is. Hey, read your mind. That's automatic. First down. Yeah, you better put a head, man head up the center. Or they just, quarterback just taps the uh, center on the fanny. It's just between the quarterback and the center. 
and he just quarterback sneak and sees. So it's a first down for the Wolverines. Totally dominating the second half. I don't understand why he's in, though. I will say that. You know, with a 31 to 3 lead late in the game, kind of wonder. Yeah. And the pitch is to Wilcher. Wilcher's down here to seven yard line, and let's go back to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta for an update. All right, Mel, still another winless team trying to make a name for themselves tonight. Memphis State was trailing 17 to nothing. They've rallied to tie Mississippi State at the half. Southern Cal, ranked 10th, leads Oregon 7 0 first quarter. Back to Madison. And now we have a new quarterback as Chris Zerbrook, number 12, takes over for Michigan, a senior from Alliance, Ohio. So it appears that Jim Harbaugh is finished for the day or for the evening, as the case may be. White. And Wilcher still in those running backs. The handoff to Wilcher inside the five. A penalty marker down as he's tackled by Bobby Taylor of Wisconsin. I know when those flags start coming a long distance, you see those flags fly through the air about 30 or 40. Holding feed is going to be holding. So Chris Zerbrug has taken over. He passed for four touchdowns against Purdue two years ago and set a record with 259 yards passing in that game. That was after Jim Harbaugh had broken his arm. Against Purdue, he's from Alliance, Ohio. He's a pretty good quarterback, if I remember correctly. Holding Alliance, Ohio. on the Purdue. offense. Repeat second down. So it'll be second down and 17 for Michigan. 9.37 remaining in the game. Michigan with this one under control, leading by 28 points. Zerbra going to the air for the first time. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Ken Higgins. Jim Harbaugh completed pretty, pretty 15 good night. of 24 passes for 310 yards and one touchdown, and he also scored a touchdown himself. That's right. How many Heisman votes is that worth? <laughs> you think Vinny has it wrapped up? Yeah, I huh? think so. so. I think, you know, of course, you never know, but right now I think he's a definite leader. The way he shredded that, that Oklahoma team. Oklahoma. Absolutely. He will be the number one draft choice. Perryman back in at fullback. Zerbrug with time. He's in trouble. Tries to unload it. And it's incomplete. He saw a wide open and tried to fire it to him, but he couldn't come up with it. Out of desperation. Jim Jordan was hanging all over the Michigan quarterback. Out of desperation. He was in the grass here, but that's only in the pros. Folks, see that. He gets rid of the football. Is that a rule that you like to see in effect in college football, Paul? No, I don't think so. You I don't like it? I, I think they... Uh, do too much. Do too much. You know, they pull on a guy's jersey and they say it's in the grass and he breaks free. 35-yard field goal attempt by Pat Moons. And it's good. Well, the Wolverines pick up three more points and with 9.15 remaining in the game, it's now Michigan 34, Wisconsin 3. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. As Michigan quarterback Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines, he has finished for the evening. But what a game he had. 321 yards total offense. And Wisconsin's total offense is 185. Well, it looks like Michigan will improve their record to 4-0, and Wisconsin will drop to 1-4. and But I'll say one thing for the Badgers. If they're going to lose, they certainly picked the right places to do it. They lost in Hawaii and in Las Vegas. <laughs> Gillette is ready to kick off with Nate Odoms. Back deep along with Dan Kissling. Odoms number 38, Kissling 45. 9-15 remaining in the game. Michigan has outscored Wisconsin 17 to nothing in the second half. Odoms a yard deep. Out 
to the 20. And he gets to the 31-yard line. Good run back by Nate Odom. J.J. Grant made the tackle. And now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WTBS Atlanta. Well, we mentioned the performance by Jim Harbaugh, Paul. Yes, sir. Now we understand that this is the first 300-yard passing game in Michigan history. Well, throughout the years, they've normally been a team that's relied more on the running game than the passing game. And you know who held the record against Indiana? Jim Harbaugh. 1985, Jim Harbaugh with 283. But Keyes takes a hit. He's going to scramble for pretty good yardage. About eight or nine yards before Alan Bishop made the tackle. Kentucky leading Southern Mississippi 32 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Syracuse winning big over Missouri 41 to nine. And Michigan winning big here in Wisconsin 34 to three. Second down to three. Penalty marker down as Keyes unloads, and it's incomplete. They intended for Reginald Tompkins, who had been Wisconsin's leading receiver coming into the game, but he's been pretty well held in check tonight. Rick Hassel defending for Michigan. Oh. Oh. Allen, the horse of Michi, Paul. Yes, sir. Racing, Wisconsin. Kenosha, excuse me. Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's where Allen's from. All-American right, three-time All-Big Ten, 54 Heisman Trophy winner, All-Pro Baltimore Colts. I can still see him going over from three yards out against the New York Giants. What many have said is best football game ever played pro football. Colts over the Giants. Sutton. Holding on the offense. Well, we've seen very little tonight of Wisconsin's Larry Emery, who has a pulled hamstring, but he's the fourth leading rusher in Wisconsin history. Bill Merrick is ranked number one, Alan Amici number two, and Rufus the Roadrunner Ferguson is third with Emery fourth, but he obviously is not at full strength and has not played much, if any, in this game. Tight end move. He just caught the pass. And Bud Key's pass is complete to his tight end, Brad Kennedy. But I think they got themselves a new quarterback. Mr. Well, Keys, I think, still will be Bud starter. Keys been in there the whole second half. That's what I mean. I mean for next game. Oh, for next game. <laughs> I, they, I like uh, I like the way this kid is performing. That's what I meant. I think I think Jim Hillis is going to use him from now on. He's, well, he's moved the football team. You know, he's, but they haven't scored. Well, I don't care. But he looks like he can throw the football. It's not all his fault that he hasn't scored. Eight twelve left in the game. It'll be second down thirteen. Actually, it's gonna be second down and longer than that. Second down and we have an illegal shift. About Twenty-three. I also like that they don't name who the mistakes are in college football. It's kind of classic. The second unit is in defensively for Michigan, holding number seventy-two. You know, I like to do in the pro. I like. That. Youngsters don't need that. Key's pass is complete to Joe Armantrop. He's short of a first down. Bobby Abrams made the tackle. A lot of new faces in there for Michigan defensively. A lot of people have always said, why don't they name the names like they do in professional football? You know, holding, ah! offsides. I kind of like knowing who the guilty person no, is. No, I don't. Not in college football. I mean, it's a team thing. And you don't have to put that much pressure on at that age. Third down and five for the Wolverines. Make that the Badgers. <laughs> They're say, the same kind of tough animal. Though. Don't worry One about it. One of those little no. tough animals. <laughs> the Wolverines have been the tougher of the two tonight, however. Bobby Abrams again on the tackle. Bringing down Joe Aventra, but he's got a first down. Bo Beckler doing a lot of substituting on defense. 
Jack Walker, 91. John Herman, 96. Brent White, 88. All in there on the front three for the Wolverines. Just over seven minutes remaining. Bud Keys is eight out of 11 for 85 yards. And his pass is complete. He throws the football well. He's got a nice arm, got a nice touch. Grant Kennedy on the reception. And now let's go back to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta. All right, Mel, the Temple Owls stun the Pittsburgh Panthers tonight. It's a final 19-13. Paul Palmer, 105 yards rushing for Temple. Oregon has scored. They're now tied with Southern Cal in the first quarter. Back to Madison. Second down and three for Wisconsin near midfield. David Burks, number three, checks in for the Badgers. He splits out wide to the right. Six and a half remaining in the game. Bud Keys has his team on the move. Ooh, what a nifty move to elude a tackle. And the pass is complete to Marvin Artley, but there's a penalty marker down. Artley has a first down yardage, but we'll see what the flag is all about. Bobby way, Adams again made the tackle. It's way, way deep into the secondary. Tim Schulte was the linebacker who almost sacked Keyes for a loss, but he eluded him with a nifty move, was able to complete the pass. Holding on the defense, 10 yard penalty. We're gonna take the penalty, it'll be an extra yard. First down automatic. So that gives Wisconsin a first down. The lighting for tonight's game is being provided by Musco Lighting of Oskaloosa, Iowa. Wisconsin playing their first night game ever here at Camp Randall Stadium. I got to get me a Broadhurst while I'm up here somewhere. We got to go find a Broadhurst shop around here somewhere to be. Mississippi, Mississippi, State, State. Mississippi State all locked up at 17 all in the second quarter. Boston College leading SMU in the second period. Blitz. Keys again with some fancy footwork. Really? And his pass is complete to Reginald Tompkins for a first down. He's nifty back there, boys. Got some nice movement. He's been rushed on about five or six occasions. Just makes a little sidestep, gets out of a tackle. He showed me a little class. 18-yard pickup. The game to the 26-yard line, a first down for Wisconsin, trying to get on the board in his second half. 5.50 remaining. Artley and Armitra, the running backs. Keys on the rollout pass. It's complete to Artley for about eight yards. Todd Schulte, 41, on the stop for Michigan. There he goes, roll out. Gets outside that defensive end. He just puts it on the money. 10 out of 13 now for Mr. Keyes. Wisconsin plays at Iowa next week, and I think you're right. We'll probably see Bud Keyes at quarterback. He guns a pass complete. Reginald Tompkins out of bounds near the 10. Keyes has been very impressive in this second half. Reginald Tompkins, also an outstanding baseball player, an outfielder on the Wisconsin baseball team. So we've got two-thirds of the outfield here with Armand Trout and Tompkins. The putter, Scott Zepicki, is also an outstanding football player or baseball player. He hit uh, 360 last spring with seven home runs for the Wisconsin baseball team. Michigan leading 34-3. Keys on the quarterback draw. Great stiff arm. And brought down at the eight. David Arnold made the tackle on him. But Keys has excited this crowd. Yes, sir. Quarterback draw. It's a play that the USC quarterback, Rodney Pete, runs so well. Here he goes. 12 out of 15 upstairs. 126 yards, he runs a little quarterback draw and he gets it to the eight. 
Four and a half remaining in the game. Second down and eight. Keyes fires a pass into the end zone, incomplete. Intended for number 14, the tight end, Brant Kennedy. Well, he was opening. Penalty oh, marker might have been a little bit behind him that time. It was low. Take another look to see if he should have caught the football. He drills it. Uh, we can't see from that angle. Would have been a good catch. Looks like a penalty coming up against Wisconsin. Todd Schulte, number 41, is Tim Brother. Twin brother Tim is number 29. They're from Villa Hills, Kentucky. Walk off to the 18. Holding against Wisconsin. It appears that Tom Quinn's microphone has stopped working. A lot of penalties in the second yeah. half. So it'll be second down and goal to go from the 18. Nine penalties for 78 yards assessed against the Badgers. Keys has a man wide open in the end zone. Brad Kennedy for the touchdown. Of course, this is not Michigan's number one unit. And Brad Keys really, but Keys really look good. Kennedy, the big tight end, made a good catch. Take a look at that good Wisconsin band. Play action again. Now he's got a lot of time to throw the football. He's right on the money. That's Key's first touchdown pass of the season. And Wisconsin's only touchdown of the game. Todd Gregory is in to try to tack on the point with Paul Christ holding. The kick is good. So with 4-12 remaining in the game, it's now Michigan 34 and Wisconsin 10. We'll be right back. Wisconsin scoring on an 18-yard pass from Bud Keys. To his tight end, it is now 34 to 10 in favor of Michigan with 4-12 remaining in the game. Mentioned that Wisconsin plays at Iowa next week. Michigan plays host to Michigan State. Brad Kennedy on the scoring end of that pass, capping off a nine-play, 69-yard drive. Michigan cheerleaders. Eric Campbell, number five, drops back deep. Todd Gregory kicking off. Campbell is, really has some speed. He's a high hurdler on the Michigan track team. Onside's kick by Wisconsin. Michigan players indicate that they have the football. They had a like shot at it. Hicks recovered it. They had a shot. It was deflected. Loose football live. And onside kick. Here it comes. Now watch. First Wolverine misses it right there. He touched it. It's Ken Higgins who missed it. Ivan Hicks gets the football back. Michigan will have excellent field position at the 48-yard line of Wisconsin with 4-12 left. Chris Zerbrug is the quarterback. Phil Webb, number 46, and they're running back along with Perriman, 37. And this is Webb. Brought down by Charlie Foley, the inside linebacker, number 42. Phil Webb is a junior from Pittsburgh. See that on the back of the Wisconsin helmets, the DM and memory of the late coach here at the University of Wisconsin, Dave McLean, who passed away at the age of 49. What a wonderful guy, I tell you. They loved him up here. Fine coach. Out of respect for Dave, a little dedication. It's nice. 
Ernie Holloway, number 48, is in it running back at second down at seven for the Wolverines. Hand off to Holloway. And again, it's Charlie Farley on the stop. Holloway, a junior from Detroit who sidelined most of last year, hobbled with an ankle injury. Clock winding down on another Michigan victory. Jim Hillis will see his team's record drop to one and four. Bill Webb is back in. They go to the wishbone on third down two. Zerbrug running the option on the keeper. He's got the first down. Rick Graff, 99, coming up to make the tackle for the Badgers. Fullback went the wrong way. It was a broken play they got away with. He got the first down anyway. Zerbrug said, he looked over to the next Where was my fullback there? I didn't have a fake man. Bo Schembechler putting the finishing touches on his 200th collegiate victory. Bill Webb and Bob Perryman are the running backs. First and 10 for Michigan at the 33 of Wisconsin. Two and a half remaining. Here we come. The pitch to Webb. Gets a block. And he's out of bounds at the 28. Chased out by Bobby Taylor, 44, and Keith Browning, 36. The second half, Michigan has rushed for 100 yards total. Wisconsin's rushing total is at minus three yards. Of course, they really miss Larry Emery, their leading rusher, who's played very little effort, if at all. He was expected to play some. He sat out all of last week's game against Wyoming with a hamstring pull, but he rushed for over 1,000 yards last year as a junior. This is Ernie Holloway. Michael Blankens, the nose guard, made the stop for Wisconsin. The executive producer of TBS Sports is Don Ellis. Coordinating producer, Michael Lardner. Our director has been Tom Smith. Associate director, Ken Nolan. Associate producer, Scott Cockerell. Third down three for the Wolverines. The fake, Zerbrug lets it go, and it's incomplete. Looked like we might have a little interference there, but no flag thrown as Jeff Brown, the tight end, got tangled up with one of the Badgers. And the rest of our fine crew here in Madison tonight working this game, we thank you. As expected, Michigan winning big, leading Wisconsin 34-10 with a minute 37 left in the game. Wishbone on fourth down three, Webb, Holloway, and Perriman in the backfield. Michael Blankens makes the stop on Bob Perriman. They are short of the first down, so Wisconsin will take over with a minute 33 left. Michigan leading 34 to 10, and this is Super Football Saturday night on TNT. Mel Proctor with Paul Hornig back in Madison, Wisconsin for the final minute and a half of this game with Michigan in control, leading 34 to 10. There were a few bright spots for Wisconsin. The second half play of Bud Keys at quarterback and throughout the game, the play of inside linebacker Michael Reed, who had 15 solo tackles, six assists, so he was involved in 21 tackles in this game. Bud Keys to throw on first down. Incomplete, right through the hands. I'll tell you one uh, thing, Tompkins, against this unit, 
Keys ought to be able to move the football. This defensive unit has covered too many people, and they're playing very soft, of course. Wisconsin has won only two of the 18 games played between the two schools here in Madison. Keys is 13 out of 18, 144, and he should have picked up another 15 there. Dropped it. But he's shown the ability to move this football team in the second half. Completed one touchdown pass. Now facing a second and 10 situation with a minute 29 left. Pass is complete. Scott Fester on the reception. Knocked out of bounds near midfield. Yeah. Twenty six yard pickup. Ken Mountain knocked him out of bounds. But Keys, he gets out of the grasp of a uh, defender right there. Now watch a good pitch back against the green. Finds a man in the middle. That's Scott Bester, his fourth catch of the night. He's going to get out of bounds, get it right into Michigan territory. Well, Keys is a better scrambler than Mike Howard. And that's so important when you're not getting the kind of blocking you'd like from your offensive line and can't set up in the pocket. But he's shown that uh, knack of eluding the pressure and uh, scrambling outside to complete passes in this game. Keys looks, throws, a great reception by Reginald Tompkins going high in the air. Gain of nine yards. That's the first catch, I think, isn't it? He's got a couple. He's got a couple. But he's been shut down for the most part. He was Wisconsin's leading receiver coming into the game. Sure was. He's got a couple tonight, but uh, nothing of consequence. Key's getting a lot of pressure. Pass is complete to Armentrop. Breaks a tackle. There he goes. Got a chance. Great run by Armentrop. Down to the 16-yard line. Andre McIntyre. Made the stop on him, but he almost broke that one for a touchdown. We've got an injured Wisconsin player. A 23-yard game. Uh, this is against the second unit. They have really had their problems with Mr. Keys. They haven't been able to touch him. Secondary's playing real loose. Haven't covered anybody. And they've moved the football. He's over 200 yards throwing the football. Keith Peterson is the injured player. The starting right tackle for Wisconsin. And we'll return to Camp Randall Stadium in a moment with a minute remaining in the game and Michigan leading 34 to 10. The injured Wisconsin player, Keith Peterson, has come out of the game. He's actually a converted guard who's only been playing tackle for a couple of weeks because of injury problems at that position. And John Hallberg, who's been hurt, is in there for him. Wisconsin trying to get one more score before game's end. Keys with lots of time. And he is intercepted, but there's a flag in the end zone. In Ken fair. Mountain on the interception for Michigan. It's interference on Michigan here. He knocked him just completely down. The ball's on the way. You'll see him go down right there. You see that? The guy got knocked down. The other man makes the interception. I don't even think it was catchable. Interception Michigan, but it's going to be interference. Rick Hassel, number 25, is the man who flattened the Wisconsin receiver. Mountain made the interception, but it'll be pass interference against the Wolverines. So Michigan. First down, goal to go at the two. <laughs> 51 seconds remaining in the game. Steve Vinci, number 22, is checked in at running back, teaming up with Joe Armentrout, number 23 for Wisconsin. First and goal to go at the two. Jim Hillis, the Wisconsin coach, has to be pleased with the way Bud Keys has moved this football team in the second half. Tompkins is wide to the left. to Vinci, who has stopped short. Steve Vinci, 190-pound sophomore from Arlington Heights, Illinois. And 
Wisconsin will take a timeout. They have one left. 40 seconds remaining. Just inches short of the end zone. Jim Hillis had hoped that his offensive line and his running backs would be two strengths of this club, but he's had a lot of injuries to both. Glenn Derby just returned to action. He played very little last week against Wyoming. He's a starting guard. He's had knee problems. Peterson was shaken up. As you mentioned, he was filling in a tackle because of injuries there previously. And Armand Trout, Emory have been hurt in the backfield. A reminder, the next week, Skip Carrier will join Paul in Stanford, California, as Washington meets the Stanford Cardinals. Live from Stanford Stadium, the action begins on TNT at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Stanford beat San Diego State today 17 to 10 and Washington pounded Cal 50 to 18. That is called a quarterback sneak here. Let Keys take it in. I, I'll probably get through the back. But boy, he's really looked good in the second half going to football. Armand Trout and Vinci are the running backs. Second and goal to go inside the one. How much of the defense are going to Quarterback sneak. He's in for the touchdown. over the top for the touchdown to make it 34 16 in favor of Michigan Andre McIntyre hit him but he was able to get in for the touchdown Todd Gregory to try the point after and it is good you pick up your morning paper this game will look a little closer than it really was but yes, sir. now Michigan 34 and Wisconsin 17 let's go back to Kevin Slater all right, down in the Southwest Conference, it's getting wild. Rice had tied Texas. The Longhorns now have a three-point lead in the third quarter. And Baylor had to come from behind and take the lead over Houston also in the fourth quarter. Now let's go back to Madison, Wisconsin. With 37 seconds remaining in the game, Michigan leads 34-17 over Wisconsin. Michigan going with the second unit offensively and defensively in this fourth quarter. And Bud Keyes able to move the football with relative ease against the second team defense. Yes, sir. They had their difficulty against the first team. With the NBA season right around the corner, what does Mike Fratello think? Well, to find out, subscribe today to Super Sports News, the official monthly magazine of TBS Sports. You'll read all about baseball, basketball, and college football. To subscribe, send $11.95 for the next 12 issues to Super Sports News, P.O. Box 2000, Decatur, Georgia, 30031. Are you a guest columnist, Paul? Yeah, I'm going to be one next year. You can write the column. Is it? Everybody else always writes the column for everybody. Not Mike, though. Mike <laughs> does his own deal. You have a ghostwriter? No, sir. I don't write the columns either. See if Wisconsin tries <laughs> another onside kick. It looks like it. 37 seconds left. Michigan anticipating an onside kick with a lot of receivers, defensive backs up on the front line, and here it comes. Taking a wrong turn. <laughs> kick went about three yards. <laughs> Penalty against Wisconsin. So Michigan will take over. 37 seconds remaining in the game. And we've got a third quarterback in there now for Michigan. Michael Taylor takes over. So we've seen Jim Harbaugh, Chris Zerberg, and now Taylor. Taylor 
Keeping it himself. Across the 30. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Good run. Keith Browning chased him out. Picked up 17. Little buck. Out of the wishbowl. 31 seconds remaining. Michael Taylor, a sophomore from Princeton, Michigan. Everybody run the option again. He run it left this time. Got a little wide side of the field to his left. Oh, weak side. And off to his fullback, Bob Perryman. One of the big stars offensively for Michigan today is the quarterback Jim Harbaugh, who passed for 310 yards and a touchdown. He also ran for one score. Ken Higgins had eight receptions for 164 yards, and Thomas Wiltshire carried 21 times for 73 yards and two touchdowns. Looks like that'll be the final play of the football game. As the Wolverines of Michigan remain unbeaten, Bo Schembechler being hoisted to the shoulders of his players, celebrating his 200th career win as a collegiate coach, the winningest active coach in Division 1A. Congratulations to Bo Schembechler. Great career. Final score for Madison, Wisconsin. Michigan 34, Wisconsin 17. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday night on TNT.